Alrighty. Hello. 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 Hey. hey. Everything's sweaty. <laughs> That's because I've it's been running a, around. August. <laughs> August in North Carolina. Like even indoors, it's like ninety percent humidity. It se- or at least it seems like it. It sure does. I think we covered everything. I mean, if there was anything that I meant to ask you guys at the last minute, the sheer flurry of preparations has completely blown that out of my mind. I think there was something I was, I don't know. I've got to scroll back through the messages. Da, 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 da. Feywild's gift table. Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can find that really fast because <laughs> it's just it was just supposed to be because you have a background or connection to the Feywild that you've you've been there one or many times in your past there's some kind of physical attribute that you have okay that suggests your connection to the Feywild um and there was like a little table of six things that you could you could roll on but you uh-huh. could just pick something out of that list if you want to or a combination of things um, let me find roll. it i'll just roll in the uh, in the chat a three three er table how do i have two copies of everything i don't know three is you fell smate uh, you fell smately you smell faintly of wow. cinnamon, lavender, nutmeg, or another comforting herb or spice. That's pretty cool. Um, that'd be funny if it, was, if it was all of them. <laughs> 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 all the spices. This is uh, interesting. Let me make a note of that. I don't know. That might be relevant to our adventure. It may not. Um, no, let's just, let's just do lavender. If everybody's physically, if not emotionally prepared. There you go. Mari says we sound clear and loud. Oh, yay. Hi, Mari. Fantastic. This is me flipping madly through my notes. Okay. I am as prepared as I can be. Forgotten how to do this. You and me. I'm, I'm curious to see whether any map image actually is okay. Because that's the thing that seems to have changed the most, as far as I'm concerned, with uh, Fantasy Grounds Unity. And I haven't had the time to actually look at any tutorials to see how what the UI is all about and how things have changed and what I can do to um, navigate it. So if, if the first time you have some kind of map encounter or whatever, and everything goes to hell, that's why. It's because I didn't prepare <laughs> and learn. Okay. So, we're going to start this adventure. There's three of you. We are in the Forgotten Realms in the uh, land of Faerun, which is a large and vast continent. We're centered upon the north, though. Yelena and Terrell, you both have uh, backgrounds that connect you to the land. And as such, you have um, formed partnerships, sometimes loose, sometimes um, doing a fair amount of work with an organization called the Emerald Enclave, uh, a group of druids and druid adjacent people who uh, their main goal is to keep the forces of nature in balance, to protect nature from forces that might destroy it. Your main um, foes are things like the undead and aberrations. But you've been called upon to do a job. Uh, speaking to Blossom Snow Beetle out of the village of Undercliff, which is adjacent in the, in the area of s- surrounding the city of Waterdeep. She has asked you to go to a village called Rushver to the east and to assist them with the problem that is affecting their art, their agriculture. You don't know the details per se, but uh, you do know that you are supposed to, um, you give a brief description of how you'll know when your 
at the village because maps of the maps of this area are few and far between um, and they've changed greatly over the past 100, 110 years. So no two maps seem to be exactly like. So you have this vague idea of where the village of Rushver is. And um, it's proximal to the high forest, the southwestern part of the high forest. And if you look at the backdrop of our fantasy grounds, <laughs> I have a map. Of, of this region. However, it's not necessarily the same. If you look at any other map, that might, map might be different and all these places might be contorted or they might not even exist. They might have different names. <laughs> Helpful. I know. So you know exactly where you're going. <laughs> and Sounds you're told that like... once you get there, you should look for um, a man named, uh, referred to as the Arbiter, Drusel. Leandon, I think that's what his name is. I can't remember if there's an N in his last name or not, but let's just say Arbiter Drusel. So the whole trip is about 200 kilometers east, if you're going in a straight line. And I'd say it takes about four days. So at first you like headed east and you stuck to the roads. It's called... <clears throat> Well, you cross the river Desarin and you pass the large hills and you briefly kept to the iron road. It's an ancient roadway. It's patchy at best and carts have to pay more care to navigate loose rocks and gullies caused by rainfall. There's a wall that runs alongside the iron road, but it's a vestige much like Cadrian's wall. It's like a remnant of an empire that no longer exists. And sometimes its path seems to cross the natural flow of your travel. And you can see where in some places past travelers have deliberately pulled down structures blocking their way that belong to this wall. And in other sections, the destruction looks more violent, like from a magical explosion or space crumpled up into a ball like a piece of paper. Um, I want the two of you to make a history check. Uh, history. Oh, this isn't going to go good. <laughs> we know <Told> nothing. <laughs> Elena's just like, look, this wall makes no sense. <laughs> and it's history. a wall. What history? It's a it's wall. It's a wall. It's man-made. <laughs> Obviously, it's it's just like a scar upon the land. This natural beauty. And you probably shouldn't even be taking the road right now. She's a bit cross about that. Um, Terrell, <laughs> you reckon that this kind of uh, this disarray and like the places where it seems like there's been a magical explosion of space crumpled like a ball into a piece of paper kind of thing where it's the most disrupted and the land looks like it's been harshly shifted hmm. you think that that might be having something to do with the spell plague um, it was like a period of time it started about 110 years ago and um, only recently uh, there was something called, the people referred to as the second sundering, that is marked as kind of like the end of that period. And at that point in history, the goddess Mistra was assassinated by the god Siric and Shar. And it basically, the weave was thrown into disarray and chaos. And portions of the weave that is used to cast magic spells bled out onto Faerun in uh, just patches of blue fire throughout the land and they caused enormous destruction. It also caused your uh, plane, the plane of Toril, your material plane, to become coterminous with another plane called Abir and places from that plane uh, suddenly appeared in the land whereas cities and, and whole, you know, whole countries almost uh, from Faerun disappeared and for all intents and purposes, it's understood that they went to this other plane of a beer. So it was kind of a messed up time. And that's part of the reason why the maps uh, diverge so greatly. That depending on the age of the map, um, it may actually faithfully depict what the land looked like at that time. 
but it has since changed greatly over the past hundred so years. So as you're traveling, the erosion by the elements and time is evident, and you have one little clash with bandits just before you reach the Fallen Hills, or um, you think you maybe heard that it's also called the Forlorn Hills, but you're, I mean, who knows what it's called? The locals have different names for it. But you, you get the general sense that, depending on who you're talking to, the hills you're traveling past, uh, they call them different things. And then at that point, Yelena kind of wins out and she's like, let's travel across the open land. And you head to the northwest, or I mean the northeast, through hilly grasslands. You had to camp out overnight where the only trouble was basically some raccoons trying to steal your food. And then as the sun grows high overhead and shifting into afternoon, you start to see some outcroppings of farms and the beginnings of another dirt road. And you pass a small lake, which has a hot spring attended by a few halflings. They're just, they're just diving and, and splashing and having a good old time. Steam rises from the water. Um, do you continue on? Uh, yeah, sorry, wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could pause and, and 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 swim the hot springs if you want to, or you just can yeah. Keep, I was, I was about to say, are they, run, are they running a spa there? <laughs> uh, it's, you see, like it seems like it's kind of like a a spa. Yeah, they're treating it like a spa. There's somebody. There's a halfling there with some linens and towels, and he'll he'll charge a copper to lend them um, if if somebody's forgotten a towel. There's somebody with refreshments, but um, it seems to be like really low key touristy. Um, for the most part, it, it's just people enjoying the water, and a couple of people have um, been entrepreneurial about it. Uh, I feel like we need to keep going. Sure. I mean, I'm I, I'm gonna. Yeah, it's been four days, and I feel a bit whiffy, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I can be talking to you if you need to. <laughs> Yelena smells no. like lavender. She I smell like really lavender. What you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm good to keep going. All right. You walk another hour, and the land flattens, and the dirt road widens, and the expanse, as far as you can see, is farmland. Do a nature check, the two of you. <gasps> oh. It's not. I'm, I'm not like <laughs> this so far. <laughs> uh, Elena's like, are we there yet? <laughs> yeah, I'm just. I'm just distracted. Apparently, it's like I, we, we, I want this but, over with. <laughs> but Terrell picks out all the plants and is like, you know, making notes in a field guide about like I saw this plant today, doing little etchings. You see, you see that the fields are full of, of various. Um, a broad spectrum of, of plants. There's acacia and buckwheat, lilacs, and lavender. Smells like Elena. Uh, huh. There's tea bushes and fruit trees and bean runners and berries and brambles. There's just vast amounts of wildflower and clover. The crops, the, the only things you notice that are absent, there seem to be potatoes and carrots. There are sweet potatoes, but you don't see any, like, normal tubers. And it seems like a little bit limited in root vegetable varieties. Most of the plants are above ground, or most of the, the flowers are above ground. And, uh, curiously, many plants that should be starting to fruit right now aren't. Every farm is littered with boxes, and even Yelena sees these. Um, sometimes they're stylized conical structures, and you recognize them as beehives. Do we see bees? You do not see any sign of actual bees flying about. Ah. The dirt road transitions into cobblestones amidst a gathering of buildings. Most of them are made of thatch or sod. One notably has stone walls, and its chimney is smoking exuberantly. It seems to be the local smithy and general store. There is one other building that looks to be of stone and wood construction. It's two stories high. Um, the only one that really looks like a two-story building in this village. And there's a sign hanging out front, and it looks like it's probably the local inner tavern. 
you see people working, curating their crops, their front gardens, uh, their, their herds. You see like there's one place that looks like it's maybe a pig farm. If you can catch th their eye, the villagers wave or say hello. Everyone seems very friendly. Finally, you spot where, um, where Blossom Snow Beetle, the, the Autumn Reaver for the Emerald Enclave, who dispatched you, said to look for to know you'd reach the village. It's a giant bee statue made of bronze in ostensibly the center of town. So you have arrived in Rushver. And I'm going to share a map of the village. <gasps> This is where I have to start rearranging my screen so I can see everything. Yeah. So you guys are towards the north part of the village. You can see the town square, but you're like uh, by the place where there's a pen and the well. And it doesn't take much effort. Uh, just you know, the first person you ask, where Arbiter Drusel might be. They point towards the cottage with an orangery. So you head towards the cottage uh, to the northwest. Uh, not the northwest. Why am I bad about northwest today? Northeast that has the orange trees. And you notice that some of the trees have fruit. A lot of them don't. Now, Kai. Yes. It's been six months since you got horribly lost and wandered out of the high forest. And the village of Rushver was the first town you came to. And everybody was weirdly nice. You're not used to people who are nice. It's possible this could be a long game on their part and you'll wake up one morning without a kidney. Or they might all be stupid. Or crazy. You're undecided. You're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, the human lady who owns the inn, Johanna, she doesn't even charge you for the room half the time. That's weird, right? Yeah. And it's not much of an inn. It doesn't have a sex pit or a death pit like you're used to. And when you <laughs> asked Johanna about it, she pointed you to a shed out back that turned out to be the privy. So that must be some weird surfacer thing. The inn is overrun with animals, which is pretty normal, but the spiders and lizards are very small, and they don't race them. You made friends with a half-orc named Terry. Friends in the sense that you win most of his money at dice, and he doesn't gripe about it. Plus, he lets you bum meals. The inn's food is pretty awful, so much that you almost remember your mom's worm surprise with longing. The surprise being the casserole in her recipe tries to eat you back. But Terry's been missing for a month. And you've thought about that here and there. The main inconvenience is that it means a month of eating what Johanna is serving at the Queen's Rest Inn, which constitutes of whatever she's feeding her pets. The only person in the village of Rushver that you've given a really wide berth to in town is the Arbiter Drusel, which is a shame because he seems like the only person in town who maybe knows anything of an arcane nature or has any kind of spell stuff to speak of. Though there was a wizard who visited the local hot spring a couple months back who taught you the sleep spell, so that was cool. But this village might just be really boring. You're not sure. Okay. Arbiter Drusel seems to have the final say in most things around town. And it seems like a good idea to stay out of his way. Like, if he doesn't notice you, he won't ask inc uncomfortable questions or tell you to get lost, you know, again. So, you woke up this morning or afternoon or whatever they call it when the sun is just at the right angle to shine like mercilessly through the window onto your pillow and make it impossible to sleep. Unfortunately, the landlady was lying in wait with a bag of millet and some raw rabbit for your breakfast. And Yum. she had news that Arbiter Drusel wants somebody named Kai to visit his cottage. 
It's a thing about your landlady. She doesn't remember non-animal faces very much, which is probably why she's only charging you uh, your room rent half the time. Because half the time, she doesn't remember that you're who you are. Okay. So you get news that uh, <laughs> the Arbiter wants to see you. What do you do? I uh, worriedly look around and, and just say to the the innkeeper, um, do you know what he wants with me? You? Did he say why he wants me? Well, I mean, he's looking at this Kai person. Hi! No, 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 hi, I'm Kai. <laughs> oh, you're Kai! <laughs> I'm Kai. Why does he want me? Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought you were new here. Gosh. <laughs> Wait, are you staying here? <laughs> no, I've just arrived today, actually. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. we have like a newcomer's discount. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, normally I'd charge you a gold for <laughs> per night, but uh, since you're since you're new here, I'll five silver. Is does that sound good? Um, I'll think about it. No. What does this average hey, want? Do you know anything about owl bears? Owl bears. Yeah, I'm trying to house train this cub, and uh, it's not going really well. Uh, do you know, I don't think I do. Sorry. Uh, uh, maybe somebody else will show up. Um, yeah. Uh, hi! Hi. Uh, were we talking? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> this fella, Drusel. I gotta remember. I gotta remember to find this person named Kai, because they're supposed to go visit with Arbiter Drusel. He really yeah, wants to see them for something important, he said. Yeah, that's me. I'm Kai. I'll I'll just head off up to the his house and go see what he wants oh do you know where it is um no do you know where it is oh yeah um it's to the northeast the one with the orange trees right okay yeah you can't miss it i think there's a sign out front that says arbiter Drusel's house i'm sure i'll find it thanks yeah have a nice day will do thanks uh, so you you step outside, and the sun is is really it's bright, it's ridiculously bright. You're not sure you've ever been in this bright a sun before, so you're kind of like scurry. Hmm. Can I scurry in the shadows? Well, you try to. Is there any shadows? Yeah. You you try to like stick to the si sides of buildings. Mm. Um. Try to get what little shade through the eaves that you can and maybe you dart between yards that have trees in it and it kind of like is this punctuated weird stealthy running through town from tree to tree sometimes you're running away from where the arbiter's cottage is just to get a little bit of shade before you brave the sunlight once more you need to get a brolly or a parasol or something Possibly, if whatever whatever the arbiter wants involves uh, standing outside for long periods of time, that might get irritating. Um, but uh, you head to the cottage and you knock on the front door. Meanwhile, all that was happening. Uh, Yelena and Terrell knocked on the cottage door of the arbiter themselves. And the cottage occupant is slow to answer, but you he they hear the jangle of pottery and a sing-songy voice called, Coming! And there's some shuffling and a lingering pause by the door, and then it swings wide open, and they see an elf, perhaps middle-aged, with carefully curled blonde hair, He's wearing a simple linen shirt and trousers and a waistcoat that is brightly colored in a flower pattern. He almost looks like he has the beginning of a paunch, but as that's kind of weird for an elf, it might just be how his clothes fit. He has gently used cosmetics. So he has some blush and some eyeliner. And as you take in his appearance, he gives both of you a once over. So, uh, Yelena and Terrell, what do you look like at first glance when the Arbiter catches sight of you? Probably like we've been walking for four days. Although I smell great. <laughs> Ooh, lavender. <laughs> so, 
So what kind of armor are you wearing? Uh, good question. Probably leather. Let me see. This is where we all hurriedly check our check inventory. Your, check your inventory. Yeah. You leather have a bow strapped to your back. Yeah, yeah bow strapped to my back. Green vest. Green, Green vest. Button. Yeah, with lots of lots pockets. Of pockets. <laughs> lots of pockets. Um, and uh, do you have? Do you wear like a cap, like uh, one of those like Robin Hood kind of caps, or do you just like have head free? I think head free. So nothing obstructs your view. Right. Uh, Terrell, what do you what do you look like? Do you have like heavy plate or something? Um, so I'm wearing chainmail. Um, quite quite tall and I've got one of them faces where you can't tell if I'm actually grumpy or really seriously thinking about something yeah uh, do you have any do you have any scars or any signs of past battles yes um so there's a few visible on my face um quite lean you can tell that I've, I've I'm a fighter um I'm trying to think would my arms be three if I've got Chainmail, probably, yeah. So you better see scars on my arms as well. Do you carry um, a shield? Sorry, say that again? Do you carry a shield? I do, yes. Okay, so you have a shield and, and maybe your weapon's strapped to your back, theoretically, because yeah. this is... but a, you can... The shield will be a bit battered, you know, it's, it's like seen some use. alarming as you enter this, this village town. And probably. you have... <laughs> maybe there's like a, a small symbol of your, your god or your goddess Maliki of... Uh, a unicorn somewhere maybe hanging around your neck or emblazoned yeah. on your armor um i would say probably a small symbol sort of like um yes hanging from a chain um and possibly also on the on the shield as well something something that, that kind of hints at uh your holy affiliations so uh drusel takes all this in and his eyes widen and he just, his face breaks out in a wide smile, and he claps his hands, and he says, Glorious! I never expected Snow Beetle's charges to arrive so quickly. You must be sent here for the Emerald Enclave, yes? That's right. That is correct. What a day this is! And me thinking I might have to buckle down and rove the forest again. Well done! Well done in arriving full marks for rapid travel. Would you like some tea? Taffy? Boiled sweet? Come in, come in, come in, come in. <laughs> do you have any green tea? I do have green tea. Oh, yes, that would yes, be yes, I can brew you. up a pot. I mean, I, I'm drinking spoo long right now, but if you would like green tea, <laughs> yes, I have leaves. Thank you. So he, he fusses with the pot for a couple minutes and, and pours in some semi-hot water. It doesn't want to burn the leaves. Uh, and he has plates of snacks. There's some scones and honey. And there's a bunch of like, there's some taffy chews that also seem to be made out of honey. And there's um, some hard candies that seem to be made out of honey. Um, there's also, um, there's orange mom marmalade for the scones. And some orange hard candies. But lo everything's sweet. There's nothing savory that he presents you. What do his teeth look like? <laughs> Good question. Does, does he have teeth? <laughs> he does have teeth. Okay. He's, they're they're the um the requisite elven teeth. So okay, they're pretty, so that, yeah, they're pretty. They're tough. pretty good constitution on his teeth. Yeah, yeah, not prone to cavities. Explains the paunch, though. It does, doesn't it? Even that elf metabolism can't handle that much sugar. Hmm. Uh. And uh, once he, he gets you guys settled with your green tea and, and offers you snacks, he settles down and there's like a little couch for you guys to, to sit in, uh, however like comfortably weird that might be for both of you <laughs> to, be, to be presented with a formal couch. <laughs> Just sort of <laughs> given both of your, um, your demeanors and, and professions. Yes. To awkwardly sit on the edge of it. And he's like, yes, yes, yes. No, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, Blossom said we could help you. Oh, yes, you can. It's the bees. The bees are the trouble. 
normally they're lovely, flitting everywhere, gathering pollen and nectar, making everything thrive and concocting their sweet gifts. Rouge Fair was built around honey and honeybees, you know. We, we rely. What we grow relies on their work, and they flat out disappeared. I'm just going to blink. Disappeared. As in, completely gone. Yes. It's been over two months. Not a bee. Oh dear. Some of us have tried pollinating by hand, giving the plants life, hoping for seed, but we're no match for what the bees can do. It's almost time we should be harvesting honey and shifting the hives before the colder weather sets in. It will be a hard winter, and we'll be short seed for spring, but uh, if we can get the bees back soon and know what happened, it will be enough for Rouchever to persevere. Um, did you notice anything unusual happening around the time that the bees disappeared? <sighs> nothing, nothing that I could specify. It was just a few months ago, they just disappeared. No honeybees for miles. Uh, south of town, as well as north of the high forest. No one finds, has found any sign of wasp or disease, which would normally leave behind a great number of little bee bodies. It's as if they just up and left for greener pastures. There is a snow beetle cousin in town. That was the connection to the Emerald Enclave. A busy snow beetle. She rode almost all the way to Uluvan before she found any honeybees. She gathered several hives worth, brought them back to Rouchevere. I'm blessed if they didn't disappear overnight as well. Overnight. Is anybody watching overnight? At this point, there's a, another knock on the door. And Drusel pauses to answer. And it's Kai. Kai, can you describe what you look like for Yelena and Terrell? Um, I'm um, slim build, dark hair in a very tasteful plait. Um, I have a little, little bit of um, chin fluff. Uh, which is the same colour as my hair, and I've got a nice headband, pointy ears, and I'm wearing a robe, which is kind of purpley. Um, well, dark purple. Well, it's like dark with a purple trim. Um, uh, yeah, and quite tall, six foot. Oh, how tall are uh, Yelena and Terrell? Um, five ten. I'll say Yelena's five eight because she's half elf, so she's. Tallish, but not super tall. And Drusel, uh, being an elf, he's he's a bit tall. He's a few inches above six feet. So he might still be the tallest tallest one in the room, but I think Kai is probably very close. And he, he uh, Arbiter sees you and he's like, ah, Rouchevere's newest resident. Ladies, may I introduce Master Isleason Kai? He Hello. apparently serves no occupation in town at the moment, other than gambling and squatting at the local inn. So I've nominated him to be your guide. He's only been here two seasons, but everyone knows him, and uh, he maybe will be useful. Um, what's two seasons in months? About six months. When did the bees disappear? Two months ago, thank you. Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you like some tea, Kai? Candy? Mm, yeah, I'd love some, and I would love some. Thank you. Are there scones as well? Oh, yeah, and I'll have a scone as well. Are there any green candies? No. Uh, They're all orange or yellow. Alas. I just tracked the green tea. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you just got, got my I asked, just got right? that. Okay. <laughs> I remembered the assignment. <laughs> ah, you did. <laughs> To answer your earlier question, we did try tracking the bees once. A month ago, I sent young Master Galt on their trail. He's naturally gifted with animals and quite stealthy. Talented boy, if a little light-fingered. He disappeared for a month, and we feared the worse. This morning, he wandered out of the high forest, injured, disoriented, but alive. I patched his wounds, and he's returned home to clean up and visit his pigs, but he should be at the inn about now looking for his friend Kai. 
So, Kai, you should be able to ameliorate talking with him, um, hearing his story directly. See what you make of it. He just okay. sounds quite um, confused to me. Oh, dear. Oh, well, yes, I've missed him. He uh, hasn't missed you, apparently. Really? <laughs> he seems How to rude. think he's only been gone a day. Oh, bless. Right, we'll go to, I'll go to, yeah, we'll go talk to him. Oh, one more thing. Uh, while you're tracking these bees down, if you enter the high forest and aren't completely distracted by the business at hand, I'm running low on many of my alchemical components. Everyone is quite busy trying to, with their, their farm upkeep, trying to seed things by hand. So there hasn't been as many, as much roving into the forest. I'm running low on many of my alchemical components. I like to experiment as well. So if you find anything interesting of herbal, floral, or toxic nature, I would appreciate samples to study and work with. I would certainly pay a bounty proportional to the interest of the item if you find anything. Also, I am an alchemist, a uh, hobbyist, and an out-of-practice healer. If you find you need uh, brewing of a potable or unguent to assist you in solving this apine conundrum, I will do what I can to assist. Super. Good to know. Okay. <sighs> If you have, if you don't have any more questions for me, I will leave you to Master Kai's uh, escort. Let you get about your business. Joanna has agreed to put you up at the inn, give you lodgings for the time of this, uh, of this endeavor. Or at least for the next week or so. I'm sure you'll be able to solve the problem quickly. We need you <laughs> to solve the problem quickly. Did that sound threatening? Yeah, I know, that sounded vaguely menacing. Just a bit. He also put a little flourish on the word toxic when he was listening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little uh, concerning. Okay. Well, mm, yes, we will solve this quickly. We will We will solve this quickly and be on our way. Well, it will certainly help with the village's recovery. Okay, well, let's go check in at the end because I could really do with a wash. And... Um, Speak to this person who's just arrived back in town after being absent for so long. So it's late afternoon. Um, the sun is still pretty high in the sky because it's it's more like late summer at this point. So the days are still pretty long. But you see people. Um, there's a cup. There's a few less people out of doors than there were when you entered the cottage. Um, people are finishing up their task for the day. But um, they're still friendly. Um, some call out greetings to Kai. Like, how you doing? They inquire if he's going to be at the end later and maybe interested in a game. Hmm, always. So I asked Kai, how did you end up here? Um, I got lost. I was somewhere. I was in the Underdark. And then all of a sudden I went wandering and I got lost. And, and I found my way here. And I've been here ever since. Uh, so where were you for, do you know, well, why, why, why were you wondering? Out of curiosity. I mean, where are oh, you from originally? <laughs> um, orig <laughs> <laughs> Let me find my notes for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's got images of him pulling a notebook out of his room. Like backstory. <laughs> Hmm. Let me see. Well, he did um, say he was lost in the Underdark. He said Underdark, yes. didn't he? Yes, the Underdark. Dark. Lost in the Underdark. Yeah. Um. Um. Because that's kind of a scary place to be. It, it, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is? Uh, I, I did. I, obviously, I would notice. I don't remember what everybody's race was. Is Kai? Is he Kai Drow? Uh, elf, elf. Elf. Just elf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, my mum, mother was a, a drow elf, but I've chosen, okay, so. you know, gotcha. and my, my father was a high elf, so I've, you know, um, just gone with elf. understand. So were you visiting family in the Underdark? I was, I was staying with my uncle. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, he was um, training me how to be a wizard. Nice. 
that we walk on in a comfortable silence. <laughs> yeah. What, how, how many bloody questions? You're, you're, <laughs> Terrell's sort, sort of hanging back and, and he's just like listening and, and not contributing in any way to this, but making note of everything it's said. So Kai, you look over your shoulder to where there's there's like a large pen next door to um, the well and uh, Arbiter Dusen's house. And that's where your, your friend Terry, that's his cottage. And those are his pigs, and you look to see if there's any sign of him still being there, but you don't see it. But you do, you do notice that the pigs seem a lot happier than they have for the past month. Uh. You point out a couple locations, like you point out where the smith is. It's a, um, it's a, the the stone building. Uh, it does seem to have like some wooden framing, but by and large, it's has uh, some combination of non-flammables. Though the roof does look like it might still be wood, um, what do they call it? Tiles? Mm, shingles. Shingles. Yeah, shingles. That's the word. Shingles. Uh, but the walls being uh, more stone and mortar. And the chimney is puff, puff, puffing away. And there's a big sign planted on the roof that says Nectar of the Goods and Sundry. And then you point out there uh, to the east of that, there is that two-story um, uh, stone and wood structure. And you can read the sign as you get closer, and it says Queen's Rest Inn. Uh, there's a stable uh, to the side of it, and there's a couple of horses. Um kind of, you know, tittering, nittering, knackering, whatever they do. Whatever, horsey things. They're doing horsey things. And there is a, there's a donkey drinking from a trough. Um, <laughs> random, random just uh, chickens running around and all kinds of stuff. The stables, though, if you peer inside, they look very clean. Like, neat as a pen. And then uh, you get up closer to the giant bee statue, and it is quite elaborate. A good 15 feet tall by um, 8 feet wide. The, the wings, they've even gone to this detail. It looks like it's been cast out of bronze, but yet the wings are like this filigree of bronze that outline and they have like this transparent glass and it's like the people of this town are really into bees a great amount of love and dedication has gone into presenting this little statue or this big statue in the center of town do you continue heading for the inn i uh, can we go up to the statue and just look at it a little bit closer I mean, oh. It's an impressive thing. Mm -hmm. It's in the middle of the the, the, the square, and it's, yeah, it's in the there's no shade, square. so I'm I'm gonna stay under the tree. Can okay, I, stay, can yeah, stay? yeah, just loiter under the tree. Yeah, um, close to uh, it, almost like the front yard of the Smith and General mm. Store. Then the inn is is one quadrant of it. Um, to the southwest, there is another farm, but there's a lot of um. There's a whole lot of wild wildflowers being grown and, and more uh, empty beehives. And then to the southeast, you see a very large uh, mound in the halfling style. I see Grim disconnected. Are you still in Discord? I can still hear you, but I've just restarted Fantasy Grounds and now it won't let me back in. Oh no. Well, it let me says see. It might be because I've I've tried to reconnect too quickly because it, it said the client name was still in use. Yeah, you might try again. Your picture has dropped. Okay, now it's, it seems like it's letting you connect. Yeah, it's coming in now. Okay, okay. So I, I can still hear you. So go on. Sometimes if you don't draw fast enough, I can kick you out to help things along. Okay. <laughs> but it looks like you were like mid process. Uh, there is a there is a large mound sod house in the halfling style to the southeast, and that also seems to have a sign on the front and the, you can pick out the word metery but you can't pick out anything else that the sign might say and that that place its yard has a lot of vivid blue and purple flowers metery metery m e a d okay m e a d e r y i was thinking m e a t and oh yeah 
That sounds awful. <laughs> like, a weird name for a butcher. <laughs> exactly. Or, um, yeah, or an abattoir. <laughs> so you approach, oh, you were approaching the bee statue? Yeah, just take a little closer. Let's see if there's anything interesting. Secret, secret compartments. <laughs> well, where are all the bees hiding? <laughs> They're hiding in the giant bee. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. Knock, Trojan knock bee. It. Trojan bee. <laughs> They're invading. <laughs> it's the opposite of invading. They're they're being kidnapped. Do it. Do it. Insight check. In the tower. Oh wait, do you have a tower? I might not turn on the tower. I see, I see a tower. Oh, good. Oh, that's right. I'm I'm the dungeon master. I don't have a tower. It's just Jelena doing that. Anyone who wants to like uh search the bee statue for uh secrets. Oh hell yeah. Okay, what were we doing? What were we throwing, sorry? Insight. Okay. Insight. I've got I'm not anywhere near it, am I? So I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, yeah you're pretty far away underneath that. No. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, it was in the tower, but we all know that you rolled like pants. So. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Yelena looks up and down the statue, uh, and it looks like crazy. She pokes it a few times surreptitiously. And at this point, you, you notice there are a couple, um, some of the villagers are kind of noticing that you're up close on the statue, like actually standing on the grassy. Um, the grassy patch that's been curated around the statue where like most people wouldn't bother like wouldn't dare like step on it because they'd want to keep the, the grass lovely and not smoosh was there was there any um keep so, off the grass you, signs <laughs> there wasn't there wasn't any keep off the grass signs but i well think uh, what do they expect <laughs> everybody just assumes that nobody would get on the grass there <laughs> the there's like a a community agree silent community agreement that nobody would step on the bee grass. I'm from the woods, okay? So, so, so you're getting scary. a couple strange stares now, like, should, do we need a sign? <laughs> should, should we get a sign? I guess I take notice and I go, whoop. And I just sort of hop off but the But you, you and study away. it and you don't see any, any strange, you know, any secret compartments. You don't even see a plaque. Um, you do see some signs that maybe uh, a couple birds today have, have, visited uh, the ah. statue but for the most part it seems to just be fairly well polished well kept um, and the grass underneath is not growing wild it's been it's been uh, sheared to a nice even length except for the places where maybe you stood for a long time <laughs> it'll bounce back it'll bounce back but right. yeah no secret fortress of bees inside the statue okay I, I think I'm reasonably satisfied I guess we can keep walking on. Yeah, if you continue towards the inn. Yeah. There's a door by the sign. Um, by the sign. And <laughs> as you open the door, just a cacophony of animals sounds reach your ears. It's basically overrun. You look about. With animals? Yeah, with animals. Okay. They're they're up on tables. They're like up on the bar. They're swinging from chandeliers. They're running along. There's there seems to be like a wood trim lining uh, the upper third of the walls, and there's like cats running along that. Um, various places they're sacked out. There's like lots of pillows everywhere. There's like cats sleeping on them. You see at least three dogs. There's a flock of ducks. Um, like basically in a corner and, and domineering one table. There's a goat. And uh, Kai's favorite, there's some spiders and lizards. And then sitting on the bar, there is a baby owlbear. And Joanna is standing with the baby owlbear, kind of pulling her hair out. But like her hair, it, it shows that she's been like pulling her hair out because it almost looks like she just put her finger in an electric socket and it's just kind of sticking out in every direction. It's kind of wispy and, and light brown and 
looks like she hasn't brushed it in a week. And she's, um, there's a, a couple tankards on the bar. Um, it looks like she's been drinking from one of them. Um, barrels behind it. It does look to be fairly well stocked. But there's spider webs everywhere. Uh, there's little bits of hay. There's hay in Johanna's hair. There's uh, tracks of the animals on the floor throughout the inn. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of disarray. It looks like a hurricane struck it. And you do see uh, Terry um, uh, the far end of the tavern uh, sitting near the ducks and he seems to be having a conversation with them. And he's sipping on a mug. Conversation with the ducks. And there's a couple other random people just sitting around. Um, po one person's poking at like a plate that seems to be raw rabbit and does not look impressed. <laughs> and uh, Johanna notices you come in and she's like, hi! New, new people in town! Have you heard about our, our new guest rate? Do you know anything about Alvarez? <laughs> Do I know anything about Alvers? Same question. Well, you yeah. are a ranger. So you could... It's in your wheelhouse, like, possible yeah. Alvers, like... Do, I uh, mean... Do, do you want me to roll for that, or...? Well, I'm not going to say that you don't know anything about Alvers, and I don't think you should, like, necessarily say I don't know anything about Alvers right. being... I will say that Alvers like, generally, generally are not domestic pets. I will say that. It's kind of unusual to see one. I mean, was it an orphan? How how did you get? How did you um end up with this this critter? Oh, I am. Oh, yeah. I know that Alvers aren't normally domestic. She like puts it puts a hand on your arm and she's like, "They're there, dear." <laughs> okay. Don't call, don't worry. <laughs> I know. I know they're not normally domestic. It's just Sprinkles broke a wing, and I've been nursing nursing her back to health. Okay. Not sure she's ready to reassimilate into the wild. So not sure how long she's gonna be here. Uh, but I'm having a hard time uh, house training her in the meantime. Cause if uh, she's gonna stay here long term, if that wing is a little gimp, I kind of like her not pee inside. Oh yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, would you, would you know anything about how to house train uh, an owlbear? And you say, it's this baby. It's a baby owlbear. Yeah. With the big googly eyes, really plump body. Uh, and you can see now that she's pointed it out that there's one wing that, uh, one wing looks normal, but like the right wing uh, is a little bit crooked and it shows signs that she has uh, a few bandages trying to support it, hoping that it's going to grow back. Um, it, 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 to a usable, uh, a usable state. I the only thing I can think of is maybe it's a little bit like a dog, where you just sort of have to, if you don't have an eye on them, make sure they're in a restricted, you know, not not in too small space, but a smaller space than the whole house, and lay down newspapers. Ooh, newspapers. Yeah. Do you think hay would work? I don't think I have. I don't They're think probably. we have a local newspaper. <laughs> do, Maybe do we, we should have, do we have newspapers? Newspaper. Do we have do we have print? <laughs> mm. There was one guest who used paper. They had scrolls. I wonder if they have uh. these scrolls behind. <laughs> yeah, there was a fellow who was staying here <laughs> named Kai. He likes, he no, likes no, scrolls no. and things. Oh no! Oh no! That's not. No no no! Not no, no. scrolls. But hey, hay will hay will be fine. Oh hey okay. All right, well, I'll put some hay. You notice at this point that she has a pitchfork. Like, she just brought it inside. And there, are, there is a little bit of hay sticking off of it. Like, she just kind of got distracted doing whatever she was doing and came running inside to check on the animals and just brought her, her tools she was working with outside inside. Hmm. hmm. Well, let me, maybe I should put, let me put the owlbear in one of the rooms. She looks at a ledger that's behind the bar, and she's like, "Oh, Drat, I told, I told, I told the arbiter I would, I would let someone have these rooms." Oh, oh, that, that's us. Maybe? There's someone staying in one room right now. I wonder who that is. That that, that would be me. Who are, who are you? <laughs> Kai. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've met before. 
we have yeah oh i didn't recognize you i'm sorry um I, do you have any yeah. newspaper no i don't have any paper whatsoever and the the, the scrolls that you may have seen is that they're not suitable for animals to poop on oh. <laughs> would uh tell me tell me Kai, would you mind uh doubling up with an owlbear um, I, I could really use a, a quiet space I, I, um, I'd ask the guests, but they're new in town. You see, I tell you what, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll build a little, um, you know, caged-in bed area for the owlbear caged in my room, in, like a blanket fort. Yes, yeah, lovely. All right, look, and she writes down the ledger book that Sprinkles is now a guest at the inn. Some kind of, uh, yeah, oh dear. Anyway, Kai just sort of looks sideways to um, Yelena and Terrell, you know, as if to say, I'll I'll tell you about this lady later on. And I'll remind myself to tell them. <laughs> Can I get you what do you think of the bar? Um, is there anything that doesn't have hay in it? Or, <laughs> or animal, animal poop? hair or poop, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, um, it, we do have some food on. If you, if you like uh, millet and raw rabbit, that's what we're serving today. Uh, but uh, to drinks, drinks, we have uh, the local brews. Let me guess. Straight from honey based mead. Yes, yeah, snow beetle mead. meadery. Well, there's, it's not all honey based mead. We do have an expedition ale that uh, oh, a, a passing traveler talked me into buying. It's not very good. It's out of uh, red larch, I believe. That's a three copper, a mug. We have uh, we have orange shandy that Drusel makes. He likes he likes the oranges. Um, but other than that, we have mead. There's a snow beetle standard, and then there's the Luirin home style mead. Um, I'll take an orange shandy. All right, so she serves you up a uh, orange shandy. Uh, anyone else? I love their mead. Which which oh, just the standard one. Standard, it's golden, clear, uh smells delicious. Mm-hmm. You're sorry about the fact is... she did say my shandy smelled delicious. Uh, Does it that smells mean quite it's really orangey. bad? It's, oh, it's, right then. it's orangey. It's it's a delicious it's a delicious for a shandy. Uh lighter lighter alcoholic content than the mead. Uh and it's cheaper. It it costs five copper. Whereas the standard mead costs a silver for each mug. And I, I guess I should have said the, the home the Luiren home style would be two silver. It's it's the priciest brew on tap. Mm. I'll uh Yelena does a standard mead. Alright, so two standard meads and a shandy. Uh so Johanna serves that up. She takes your money. So so deduct your drinks. How many silver for gold? Ten. Okay. Uh, where do you head with your? Now you have your drinks. Um, I'm gonna nudge uh, Kai and say, "Is is that the person we're supposed to be talking to? Your friend who di- disappeared?" Uh, Terry. Yeah, yeah, Terry. Over there, talking yeah. to the ducks. Talking to the ducks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we go speak to him, or do you want to get settled into your rooms first? Well, I do really want to get cleaned up, but I think maybe we should talk to him first while we have his drink and then and then go settle in. I do have a map for the for the end, but I think we can stick with theater of the mind at this point because there's nothing <laughs> it, it it lacks a certain amount of hay and owlbears. <laughs> okay, it's just a, a tavern map, so you're settling into your rooms. Dumping anything extra? Do you have extras? Do you have like packs and heavy stuff that you wouldn't necessarily carry with you wherever you walk in the town? Yeah, I guess the whole bedroll and um... extra javelins, kind of dump them. Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. No, no need to carry the javelins everywhere. <laughs> you never know. Sometimes it makes it hard to get through the doorway. You know. I'll keep my weapons on me, though. Just straps your back. Yeah. 
So the, the rooms are, are clean, uh, comfortable. And when I say clean, I mean, there's still spider webs. And you might see a little lizard dart along uh, a window. And a cat might sneak in here and there and actually be sleeping on your bed. Uh, but the sheets uh, smell fresh. Uh, they look like they've been changed. There's no sign of, of bed bugs or anything like that. Uh, the walls have been scrubbed. There's wide open windows that let in lots of light. All in all, uh, a, a nice, happy room. And you each get your own. There seems to be three uh, guest rooms total in this inn. Uh, conveniently, since there's three of you. Oh, that's handy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And they're all on the first floor. Uh, upstairs is apparently Johanna's uh, private space. Okay. Should we... Um, is there... Should we... Bathing facilities, or just like a, a little wash stand you can pour yeah, water into? Yeah, it's a little wash stand. That's probably good enough for but There's Elena. a privy out back uh, for personal ablutions. Uh, but each room has like a little kind of uh, a stand with a, a bowl of water and linens. For the sake of cleanliness. Okay, so Terrell's going to go the whole nine yards. Armor off. Shit off. If you ask Johanna about a actual bath bath, she'll direct you to the stable where there <laughs> is there is like one of those um, metal bathtubs that she uses for washing the animals. Okay. And, and she'll like haul over water from the well, fresh for that. But it'll be like fairly tepid. She won't boil the water or anything. So it'll be whatever the temperature is of the well water. I should have stopped at that spa. Um, and there's, there is soap as well, and it's all, um, it seems to be honey-based soap. It has a nice, pleasant, pleasant scent about it. Uh, very exfoliating, moisturizing. Hmm. And it has little, little bees etched into the, to the bar. So you've, you've dumped your stuff, uh, cleaned up the best you can. Yep. Terrell, uh, roll, a, roll a dexterity save. Dex. Uh, got to remember where that is. It's not on there. There. Okay, save. Oh! Yeah, you trip over two dogs running across the room. <sighs> yeah, they're just, they just come out of nowhere. They're, they're chasing each other, and your feet get tangled, and you have to catch yourself on the doorway or completely splat on the floor. I will attempt to catch myself on the doorway. So you're going to have to keep, keep an eye out for, for these animals because they're everywhere. So finally you get settled. You've had your beer. Uh, Johanna offers you refills and you have to go through the whole thing of like introducing yourself again and this time she offers you a free round on the house for being new guests. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and you settle like down. It, yeah. Uh, next to, uh, finally, I guess, approaching Terry, who's yeah. still talking with the ducks. And as you approach, you hear him being like, talking like, I feared for my life. It was terrifying. And you notice Terry, he smells, he has, a, he has a fragrance coming up off of him. It's like wintergreen. And he has a bushy dark hair. He's a half-orc. He has very pronounced tusks, very, very faint green tinge to his skin. You see, as he's sitting at the table, he's kind of fiddling with a fork, and his, his fingers just can't stay still. He's got to fidget with something. And he looks up, he sees Kai, he's like, Kai! Hey, buddy! Hello. How's it going? I'm fine, thanks. Where have you been? What? Well, I've... I just went to the forest, you know. Uh, it was just a, a little day trip, checking out something for the Arbiter. It was crazy. What were you checking out for the Arbiter? We wanted me what to check bees. Bees, bees, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. You know you've been, been gone a month. Yeah. No! Yeah. I mean, that's 
what he said, but I think he might be getting a little bit old. Are you sure you're okay? Because yeah, I haven't I'm been fine. gone a day. I've only been gone a day. I haven't been gone a month. No, you've definitely been gone a month. So do you do you know what happens here you out know, there in the woods? That might be why the pigs were acting funny when I stopped off at home. Yeah, maybe. They were probably fed up yeah, with like me. Yeah, like Zelda, she, she, she didn't seem to like really remember her dance moves. It was weird. It's like <laughs> she hasn't been practicing. Huh. Yeah, see, a month? you've definitely been gone. Well. Well. The art last month, well, uh, yesterday, last month, yesterday, uh, whenever I talk to the arbiter and he asks me, uh, they got a set of a, a little hive of bees and they wanted me to track if the bees left where they went to try to track down the other bees, you know, because the bees are missing. Did you know that? The bees are missing. Yes. I mean, we might not have a honey festival because there won't be <clears throat> honey. And you know that the whole bee race that I told you about? Mm hmm Might not have bee races, because we don't have any bees. How do you raise bees if you don't have, you know, bees? Oh, yeah. Dumb. Anyway, I was, I was following the bees. I was tracking them, you know. They were being bees. They, they were going somewhere. They seemed to be following, like, go, they were headed somewhere distinctly, you know. They went into the high forest. So I tracked them into the woods for a ways. It, it was off the beaten path, um, and, and I was following them real good, but then there were orcs. Orcs spotted me, and they were that, uh, you know, the, the Malarite kind of orcs that really like hunting stuff, and they decided they wanted to hunt me. So I kind of lost the trail of the bees, because I was running away from the orcs. But they caught me, which sucked. Beat me up a little. That lashed me to a pole and dragged me back to their camp. That part really sucked. Yeah. Um. <sighs> yeah. So I thought I was kind of, you know, Enders. I thought I was, you know, orc soup. But uh, the orcs decided I was too weak to consider a trophy. So they said that they were going to feed me to something they had in a pit. I didn't see what was in the pit. They had a tarp over it. Uh, you, did they call it by any name or anything? No. They just said feed them to the pit. Okay. Right, Terry, I'm just I'm uh, uh, These two people with me, um, I've just met them and they're... That you know, we're gonna help. Um, what's his name out to try and find the bees? Oh, you're helping our so, arbiter, Drusel? Yeah, so th this, this is Yelena and Terrell. So, oh, hi, I'm you know. Terry. Hi, Terry. Nice to meet you, Terry Terrell. <laughs> Almost the same name. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> more awkward silence. <laughs> No, I keep pressing the wrong button. Terrell's tell, tell <laughs> having a really bad day. Um, yeah, I'm just going to fold my arms and look at him. Rude. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So these these guys are are they are they are they stalking bees too? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but anyway, getting back to this look orc out for camp. orcs. Yeah, well, is there any, anything else you can tell us about Well, this they camp said they were going to feed me to this pit thing, and I thought, well, that's not cool. So I managed to get loose of my bonds, you know, because I'm, I'm squirrely that way. You know, I'm double-jointed and all that stuff. Uh, so I managed to work free, and I escaped. And I was running, 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 running. And I must not have been paying attention to where I was going because they were chasing me. Because uh, suddenly I was, like, in a field of flowers, and there was this, like, little winged person asking me to tea. And I went and had tea. Uh, and then I came uh, back home, and now everybody's acting like I've been gone a month. You probably have been. Isn't that one of the big... But I, yeah. I should know that, right? Yeah. With my background, I know yeah, that. Yeah, with you, your background, you're, very careful. you're, you don't do you're that. instantly <laughs> suspicious. Yeah, that he wandered into the Feywild, he's and that's, had a really good time while he's been there. Though. And that's why he doesn't realize he's been gone a month. That to him, it probably only was the time 
that it took for him to drink a cup of tea. But he does seem to vaguely remember it. If you if you question him more about, about what he did, like with the fairy and the flowers, he doesn't remember any details beyond he had tea. It's like kind of fuzzy. But that would explain why he thinks he's only been gone a day. Okay. Terry. Terrell. Before the orcs <laughs> before the orcs chased you. Where were the bees heading? North. Not they weren't you know, they weren't too far from the camp the orcs struck me to. And I didn't run that far when I made my escape before I wound up in the, the place with all the flowers. So okay. they're all somewhere close together. Uh, where in relation to where we are now is um, Ark Camp f- Flower Field? Oh well, I don't know. I don't think I could write you, uh, draw you a specific map. But if you go, you know, to the high forest to the northeast, like if you go, well, there's a path, you know, to the fringes. Of the high forest and if you follow the path you know until it disappears and then you kind of head a little bit to like you know the directions that bees fly a little bit you know to the to the east a little bit north then I think that's around the area when I got ambushed and then I think, a little bit north. though it's hard to read the sky, you know, because of all the trees in the high forest. Do we think and it's I was worth like, taking him with us? I was like to show too busy, away? like yeah, trying probably. to not die to notice where the moss was growing, the lichen was growing on the trees, and get a sense of direction. It was a really, it was a really frantic time. You know, a lot of adrenaline. So my sense of direction. I mean, I, I didn't have time to like draw a map. Hmm. But like, if you go there and then uh, try to track bees yourself or track orcs or something, maybe you'll find it. It's a start. Hmm. Now you notice that um, you notice that Terry does have a lot of bandages. He seems to have uh, there's some lacerations on his forehead, some bruises. There's signs of uh, a scar that is healing, like where it looks like he had recently an open wound, but uh, through the arbiter's um, ministrations, it's been closed, but it's still he's still recovering. On his head? His head, his arms. And can we tell if that's from the orcs beating him up? Yeah, and based off of what he's told you, it, it sounds like that his any injuries are probably once he with he withstood uh, from the orcs. Um. Uh, um. Can roll religion checks. All of us. Whoever would like to. Terrell, you picked up on the word he said. Uh, he said Malarite orcs at some point. Uh-huh. And you recognize that uh, Malar is another god. Uh, god of the hunt. He's typically associated with more brutal aspect of, um, of forestry, of... Um, animals eating animals he's also associated with lycanthropy lycanthropy is that how you say that word lycanthropy lycanthropy yeah, I think. Yeah, sort of yeah. Said, right, yeah rhymes with philanthropy yeah less less pageantry in a hunt and more just the brutal uh Killing. strategy and uh thrill of the kill 
So those orcs will just be followers of Mala then. Yes. Yeah. If you if you ask Terry about it, he'll say he saw a symbol. The symbol of Malar. Which is like a clawed hand. Sometimes uh it's uh the talons of a werewolf, sometimes it's a bear paw, bear claw. Not the pastry, but the actual like bear claw. Well now I'm hungry. I mean, yeah, it's true. Uh I'm just wondering if that is a very used to us or not, or if it's just a case of we know that they'll be a bit nasty if we find them. You you do know that uh it's the thrill thrill of the hunt it means that they can be strategic at times. And they like to say corner prey. Uh they like a challenge. Um does Terry know how big the camp was and how many orcs there were in the camp? He'll say he saw at least four. Okay. It's not necessarily going to mean all, though, is it? If he was beaten up and scared. He'll say one of them was working with a mortar and, mortar and pestle. Mm-hmm. Seemed to be grinding up some kind of flour. Okay. And there were very large yellow flowers he hadn't seen before. Kai's thinking he can make a bit of dosh on this um, thing. A bit of dosh. Are you, a bit are of dosh. You, what are you thinking? A bit of dough. I could go, you know, if we get to the orc camp, I can find the orc that was grinding up interesting flowers. Ah, and that's right. Steal it and go take it to the arbiter and make him pay me handsomely for it. Mm-hmm. Assuming, assuming it's interesting to the mm. arbiter. Yeah. Um, Terry Terry seems to have had enough talking about you know his harrowing experience, and uh, he asks Kai if he wants to like play some dice. Um. Um. Well, it, I don't know if I've got time to play f- dice. Terrell, uh, Terrell, Yelena. What? When are you wanting to? Sh- off on the mission sort of thing quest so is it better to go daytime or do we want to go in the, in the night it's I'm getting daytime be, it's getting uh, to be dark nighttime. yeah and uh evening crew people are coming in to drink for the night so there's more, more seems, to show up in the end seems sensible to start off the thing really unless unless we think there's any advantage of you know going now yeah, let's 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 rest and, and go in the morning. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can play some dice, Terry. If we're gonna rest overnight, um, can I try a cure wounds on the Alba? Oh, sure. That's a good idea. Are you gonna do anything um with its wing? Well, what exactly is it? Does it look like it's been just damaged, or it's been sort of like? Uh, ripped off. Well, it, it looks like it's been it's been damaged, like it was broken, uh. and it's been uh, bandaged somewhat by jo- Johanna to try to give it support while it heals. You can do okay. a medicine check to try to check her work. Yeah, sure. Let's try that wisdom check. Medicine. Medicine check. Sorry. Oh, oh I put points in that. Yeah. All right, thirteen. Uh, you you're able to like uh, check her work, and you think it should be a little bit. Um, there should be a little be a little bit tighter, uh, and make sure that the wing is is grows back at the proper angle. So you adjust the bandages a little bit, and okay. when you cast cure wounds, uh, the baby Albert lets out a little grahoot of happiness and you see it try to like you know work its its arms still in the bandages and uh you loosen them up and the right wing f- unfurls and it seems to flap a little bit and be at the same angle as the left uninjured wing cool and the owlbears that that kind of sets off a few frenzied minutes of the owlbear fluffing its wings and running all over the inn 
as it tries to fly, but it's still a baby, so it's not quite old enough to kind of, uh, you know, get off the ground. But then owlbears don't really, really fly anyhow. Mm. So it's in that kind of, like, stage where it doesn't understand that it can't fly and it's trying really hard. Okay. So, really, its, it's wing is, is at the point now where it could probably go back to its parents? Um, was it orphaned? I didn't think it was. Well, Johanna's kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, might take some time. Uh, tomorrow I can get someone to maybe uh, speak with the owlbear and ask if it has parents. Well, I could do that. Oh, yeah, okay. we, can take him, we can take him with us. Well, we'll I've, go got sp- I've got to speak with animals. Do I have that? I might have that too, actually. I have animal friendship. So you can totally be friends with the owlbear. I could totally be friends. You probably could have house trained the owlbear. Well, maybe, maybe you could. The owlbear could stay in your room tonight, then, Yelena, instead of my room. Try your room. <laughs> maybe you can keep the owlbear from like leaving the blanket for it and actually trying to sleep on the bed, <laughs> which is yeah. what it would have done sleeping with Kai. And like animals do, they take up three quarters of the bed, mm-hmm. even if they're smaller. Always, than you. always. <laughs> like there's just like this little Kai ball curled into the corner, and no, the owlbear like is sprawled across the rest. <laughs> yeah, it's like just lying right on the very edge on the precipice of the, <laughs> the bed, the mattress. Let me look up this. Uh, can I even look what this uh, up there? I cannot talk. The animal friendship. Yeah, I was trying to see what it. Uh... It's not letting me pull up the chart of it. Let me let me look. It says spells. that it convinces you. It lets you convince a beast that you mean it no harm. Yeah, it's the little brown square to the right of animal friendship. Ah, thank you. For the purposes of this, I would say animal friendship allows you to like uh, train the owlbear. Okay. Yeah. Sure. To do reasonable things. Yeah. You might not get the baby owlbear to wear a little cute suit for pictures, but, <laughs> but like, but like the owlbear will cuddle and like kind of listen to your commands. All right, is it is its intelligence four or higher? The spell um, fails otherwise. Huh. It needs to be. It needs to be dumb. <laughs> it's pretty dumb. I think. I don't think. I think they have a um intelligence of three. I'd have to look up the owlbear. Okay, and it works for 24 hours, so we just want to say I did it and was successful. Yeah, they have a three intelligence. Okay. And I'm assuming we rest overnight, so I get that spell slot back tomorrow yes. morning? Okay, perfect. We can do it. All right. Can, can sleeps, he'll stay with me. Sleeps by the side of the bed uh, in the blanket fort. A quiet night. No peeing indoors. The other two of you, uh, you do have, like, dogs break into your room. <laughs> Terrell. <laughs> Terrell. <laughs> like, wee hours of the morning, you hear this bump, bump, bump at your door, and then a couple dogs, like, break it open. Not break it, but well, you know how they, like, just push it open? Because yep. it's a little bit loose on the latch, and then it's, there's, like, this clitter, clatter, clatter of, like, paws on the floor, and then there's just this heave of, of warm bodies on the bed with you. <laughs> and of course it's um, summertime, right? Yeah, it's summertime. Oh, it's yeah. So it's it's a warm sleep. Kai, there's there's a lizard sleeping on your face. <laughs> and um middle of the night. Cat shows up trying to pounce on the lizard. <laughs> there's like a flurry of arms and, and limbs and everything goes r- racing off. <laughs> But at least I'm owlbear free, so yeah. But you wake up in the morning. You find there's there's um raw oats for breakfast, <laughs> uh, more mead. But also, uh, the arbiter has sent over some scones and honey and marmalade. Uh, I guess kind of taking pity on you, and and the fact that there are actual guests in the village as an alternate breakfast. That sounds ideal. Have a good sugar buzz before going into the woods. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. And, you know, if we maybe spill a bit of honey on us, you know, um, clothes, then we might get attract some bees. 
and we might be able to find him that way. That's true. Depends on how strongly I smell of lavender also. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I could be walking around with one of those bee suits I mean, on. If, <laughs> if it's possible, you, you know that you have enough. Under normal circumstances, you feel like you're, you're smelly enough in a sweet way that insects would be attracted to you. And once you step outside, flies at least, gnats, you know, things that aren't bees, uh, fly near you and check you out. Um, so at this point, you're outside, you're ready to head out, and I think this would be a good time to take a break if you want to. Mm, yeah. Okay, like back in minutes. five. Back in five. Refill the drinks. Back. What is What kind of footwear does Kai have? Footwear? Yeah, uh, wearing boots or what? Slippers. I mean, that's what <laughs> I was thinking, I was like wondering. Poncy, poncy felt slippers, no, I'm pretty sure he's got, you know, well he came from... Um, came from the Underdark, so he probably underdark. would have had something booty. Some sort of leather boots, yeah. Yes. Since you don't, maybe don't want to step on it, step in anything in the Underdark, so it's probably uh, forest friendly. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm back. Welcome back. So it's morning time. You've all assembled. You're headed for the High Forest. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. Last minute regrets. <laughs> the trail northward uh, it begins confidently out of Rouge Fair. And as the trees and underbrush grow dense around you, you begin to see hiccups in the tried and true footpath. And then finally, nothing. There's a canopy of branches that now shade you from the summer sun. So Kai is happy. Mm. It insights. Can I just say, this is not a map. This is just a picture of trees. It is, because that's, that's, <laughs> you're in the high forest. That's what I said. I said, okay. like, I, I said map, but it's not really a map in that I, I, I'm not giving you like a nice layout of exactly where everything is okay. in the high forest. So like the backdrop in Fantasy Grounds is the, is the most detail you have of, what, of, of anything that exists. Right. Because while some of you have been maybe into the high forest before, um, it's, it's a place that is not mapped in detail. It's largely unknown. So if someone who lives in the vicinity of the high forest, they might become familiar with certain trails or certain areas that, that they have traveled often, but they mm. are not familiar with the full expanse of the forest. And some people will say that the forest is larger inside than it seems from the outside. Um, others will say that paths change with time. And then there is that whole like spell plague thing that we were thinking about earlier that over the past hundred years, the landscape and um, arrangement of the land has been altered. Um, in some ways temporarily, in some ways permanently over time uh, through the onslaught of raw magic from the weave. Okay. So it's hard, it's hard to have a good map, even, even for uh, this area where you're, you're, you know, less than a mile into the forest, probably in a section that, well, you know, maybe not a ton of people travel here unless they live in the forest. It's not the most mysterious section, you know. There's some people who've probably been here before. Um, the canopy is insulating the moisture rising from the ground due to the ambient temperature, and there's like that uh, faint moistness and the scent of petrichor mixed in with lavender from Yelena. <laughs> and the, the sounds, they're tranquil. They're, they're inquisitive birds and a throaty bullfrog and there's a chitter of, of chipmunks and squirrels chewing nuts. You remember, Terry seemed to think that uh, the orcs were kind of like to the north or the northeast, maybe eastward, uh, once the trail ended. Uh, and that's the area you're in now. Um... How do you want to proceed navigating your way through the forest? Hmm. Do we um, see any bees? Is there any bees? Any buzzing of bees? 
<clears throat> Your passive perce perception, the only insect sounds you hear are the chittering of things like millbugs in, in a fallen log on the, on the ground. I guess we just go north. Mm. Okay. Uh, do you want to? Are you going to try to track anything? I was going to say because I've got ranger background, and you're obviously a ranger. Can we? Right. Can we do like a nature check? <laughs> see if we can see anything <laughs> that is. Do I'm a just survival <laughs> check to see. I'm just laughing at the thought of looking for bee tracks. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Do, do a survival some, like... or a nature check. I mean, whichever one you're proficient in. If you're only proficient in one of them, uh, to see if you see signs of. A bee tracks. I was thinking about orcs, but <laughs> I see nothing. It's survival. Ooh. Ooh. Yelena, you actually find uh you yes. find one little bee body. Oh. A tiny oh. dead bee. And from examining the body. You think it was a queen. Ooh. That's probably not good. Mm -mm. What direction is the bee body pointing in? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Should we draw a little chalk well, line you're around walking, it? You were, kind of, you were kind of going east when you came across this bee body. But what direction is the bee body pointing in? It's like, is the head pointing pain, east? It's Ed was pointing east. Its okay. ass was pointing east. Its head was pointed uh, west, I guess, because it was a normal bee and not a bee broken in half. <laughs> not a right angle bee. So back the way we came. Yeah. Okay. But I'm a bee body is that. pretty light, so it a could bee have... falling. Yeah. Even though there's not much of a breeze in the forest because of the, yeah. the barrier that the trees provide and the, and the underbrush, a bee's pretty just light. So way. if it's dead weight, it could just, you know, just the sheer gravity of the situation could. Uh, it, it's not necessarily educational where the bee body okay. is pointing because it's so it's worth a try. It's just a couple. It's like a couple centimeters long. <laughs> um. <laughs> Nice. Fair CSI. <laughs> um, on on that same check, do I notice any danger since it's a survival? Any uh, orc tracks? Anything we need to be worried about? Or do I need to do another roll? You see signs. Also headed east. Of something uh, potentially large, has been moving through the forest and has bent back some of the underbrush some some of the thinner twigs and branches have been snapped off in its wake and there's a little bit of a, a press um, in some places there's a little bit of a press weight of something traveling on ground but there's also it just seems like some of the um, branches that are broken um, and, and bent back are higher you're not quite sure if it's something, um, it could possibly be something that was maybe 10 feet tall mm. and traveling through the forest. Alarming. So the thing that Terry said they had in a pit, potentially. Whatever it Why is. Why did they let it out of the pit? Possibly. Mm. Of course, if it's 10 feet tall, you think it could get out of the pit. Mm. And it's a very really deep to pit. Mm. Terry did say the pit was covered with a tarp. Mm. <laughs> that must not be very bright either. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a Three intelligence for the win. <laughs> okay, what do you reckon? North or east? Well, it, Terry said the bees were sort of heading in the direction mm. of the orc camp, so I think we should follow the tracks. What do okay. you think? So we think there's a connection, okay. connection between the orcs and the bees, maybe? They, they have something to do with it? Potentially, depending on what Terry said. But, you know, he could be all muddled up and we could be just walking into complete, you know, shit show. Um, <laughs> with I mean, it's starting somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, if he disappeared into the fair 
for a month. Could the bees have disappeared in there and just not come back? Maybe. Mm. Is it the, the fae that's stealing the bees? All sorts of hypotheses. Just... I know. They could be under the tap. The orcs could have them trapped under there. That seems a bit desperate and daft, but it's there. Yeah. I like the fae idea. Mm-hmm. Why would they want them, though? Tattoo to pets. kill um, <laughs> everybody else. Because they're going to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> back, back to <laughs> what we need to be doing. I had a bet with myself regarding this adventure, and so far I'm not winning. <laughs> what was your bet? What was your bet? I'm not telling you. <laughs> When it happens, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, yeah, we should just follow. Since it looks like there's something happening in the eastward direction, let's go. Yeah. Sure. Check yeah. All right. Let's follow them tracks. Just be careful. Yes. You continue moving through the forest eastwardly. Um, another half hour, you've traveled another mile at least. Uh, sounds stay the same. Yelena... She's keeping her eyes peeled. She finds two more dead queen bees. Just queens. queen ones. Well, that's how it enables them to take over the rest of the hive. Yeah. Somebody, somebody's filling in as a queen bee. Hmm. Okay. You feel a vibration in the ground, and you hear underbrush being crushed to the north. Something is moving fast through the forest. Towards us? Uh, roll insight checks in the tower. I wish I wasn't wearing chainmail and I could climb a tree. Um, Kai and Yelena are confused. Kai, because Kai, this is really... The first above ground forest that Kai remembers being in, uh, the the forest that you're used to, Kai, they're they're usually made out of very tall mushrooms. Mm. So this is just all kind of weird and new experience. It's kind of lovely though. It's it's like everything you've been experiencing since you got lost and came out in the forest has been much nicer than things you remember. Mm. Except for the sunlight part, but but you know people are nicer. The woods are more are lush. Things smell on the whole better, especially when Yelena's standing nearby. <laughs> so it's been an interesting experience, and you're a little bit distracted by it. Yelena, you're not quite sure. You've been focused on these bees, you know, tracking the bees. So when you suddenly hear the sound, you're having a hard time placing where it's coming from and and what it might be. But Terrell, you're certain that it's running from the north. It's headed towards you. And it sounds like uh, something large, and there's more than one thing. A pack of something is running towards you. Okay, I shall pass this on to my party. Uh, Since I've grown up in this area, do I have an idea of what it could be? If it's like a certain, like, boss or something bigger or... Um, based off your, your insight check, and you guys can place yourself on the map. Adjust yourselves. How and do we and since it's been so map? long, uh, if you hit the cross swords in the top right hand of Fantasy Grounds Unity, it'll open the combat tracker, and Ooh. you can drag yourself from there onto the map. Okay, you, do we know where your, we are in this? <laughs> on your little picture. Or let me put you on the map. I don't know. Maybe this is restricted. I can't remember. Yeah, it looks like I can't do it. Yeah. No. It's been, what, seven, eight months since we've played. Now you can adjust yourselves accordingly, I think. Okay, well, I'm going to unlimber my shield and step in front of the other guys. Can anybody climb? Are we... Oh, crap. I have something set on where I have to approve your stuff. Let me, um... Crap. Let me turn something off. It's this, this is what I was warning you about, is how the settings have changed, and I'm like, uh, I'm used to the old way, and I'm like, I don't know if I have things. Well, crap. I don't want you guys, I want you to be able to move yourself. 
It just seemed like a lot more work if you have to do it. Yeah, it's doing a weird thing where it'll show me, if I drag it, it shows oh, me the distance. right now. Maybe I have it locked. There we go. Oh, yay, yeah. thank God. Okay. It's all coming back to me now. Freedom of movement, y'all. All right. I <laughs> think I would like to climb a tree and be have my bow out ready. Um, yeah, I'll say you have enough time to, to climb a tree. Not like super high, but you can get like maybe 10 feet up. Right, and to see if I can see what's what's going on and what's happening. Yeah, 10, 10, 10, 15 feet up in a tree, half your movement, you can climb. Okay. Uh, though, do a um a, a athletics or acrobatics check to see whether or not you actually climb. Or if you fall out of the tree. It should be easy. Uh oh yes. uh, Alas! <laughs> that's, that's the only thing you could have rolled that would have made this fail. Yep. And that's so you try, you try to scramble up a tree, but you misjudge uh, the branches and it snaps underneath you and you tumble to the ground at the foot of this tree and you're prone. Great. I apologize to you later. I think I may have jinxed you there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The dice have not been kind to you, Elena, today so far. No, I, I need to change the color, don't I? Yep. Or you need a pencil. A magic pencil, a pencil of luck, or a dice cat. These these are all things that can uh, that can aid you to roll higher numbers. Indeed, I changed, I changed it to green. So let's see. Uh, <laughs> we start. Better not jinx me now because we're both green. Oh no! What I was getting, and I what I meant to say was kind of working my way around to is Yelena. I'm not Yelena. Uh, Terrell, you rolled a natural twenty in the tower. So not only do you know that there are multiple things running your way, you're pretty sure that they are boar. They're a wild boar running your way. Okay, in which case, the safest thing to do is get out of their way and let them pass. I would have thought, because they would only be, and I'm going to assume, well, I don't know, do you need me to roll for this to see if I know? Well, do you say anything to anybody else? Well, if I think that the boar, I'm going to say, I think it's a pack of boars, and if they're running this way, it's, it's likely that they're being chased by something, and the safest thing we can do is step out of sight. But Yelena's now prone on her back. Yelena's prone, so she doesn't get to do anything to react in time. She, might, she can hear that there's boar, that you think they're boar. Um, you right. and Kai can move and, and choose to do how you want to react to this thing that there's a maybe a pack of wild boar running your way and how you want to react to that how much does my love of nature go towards killing animals um well that's for you to decide mm. you know how do you interpret uh keeping nature in balance and and defending nature um how you think you're going to react to the situation of, of wild boar yeah, I mean, if it's just a startled pack of boar, I wouldn't want to kill them. I'd let them just pass. But if it's if they are trying to attack us because of whatever reason, I'd want to defend us against it. So, um, but like, if you want to um, ready an action, or, or if you want to move out of the way, or if you want a ready action to dodge any boar to stay out of their way, if you think they're just going to run past, you can do that. Okay. Um, um, Kai, how do you think Kai would respond to, like, this announcement that it's a pack of wild boar? I would um, have Kai, I would actually have Kai roll a nature check. Okay. Because I'm not boar? sure Kai has ever encountered boar before. You know your friend Terry has pigs. <laughs> okay, you, you, you know what a boar is. So you know it's like a big giant wild pig. Yeah, I would. Uh, I mean, Kai would definitely hide. I would say. So you're gonna hide, you know, hide in the tree, behind a, behind a bush. Yeah, behind a bush or something. Behind a bush. Yeah. In that case, do I have time to go over to Yelena and grab her and pull her behind a tree trunk with me? Yeah, you could run. Uh, you could run up to Yelena, and grab her and pull her about ten feet, maybe fifteen. What are these squares again? Are they five Thank you. feet? Five feet each. And the directions are, are the same as you would expect. Uh, uh, upward is north, 
west is to the left, east is to the right. So if I say I've, I've run over there behind a, um, a particularly large tree trunk or something and dragged Yelena with me. But I can't move Yelena. She'll have to move herself. <laughs> you like dragged her along with you to kind of get yeah. her out of the way yeah. for what you think is like this is the clearest part of the forest right here and, and you kind of guesstimated what path the, the boar are going to take. Yeah, the idea being they're just, they're just on like a, a run, you know, like a um, like a little wild wild growth path that the animals use and they're just charging down it and the idea being they'll just keep on going. So the boar come into view and they're, they're showing as hostile but they're not, they're neutral at this point. Um... Have a uh, Yelena roll a D four. Okay, so the the boar come. That's kind of the to to measure what direction they're going to actually run in. You see, a, a there's a giant boar and two smaller boar running behind it that come running into the clearing, and they come dashing up within twenty feet of where you are. And you start to get a little nervous about, oh, are they coming this way? Are they not coming this way? And you see the boar and the two coming behind it veer off. Uh, they kind of circle, head under the canopy of these, and start heading off in a southeast direction. Whee! Uh, roll insight checks in the tower. Well, I guess you could do it on the open, too. I guess it doesn't really matter. So I've see. run better in the tower. <laughs> you guys, you're like, they're boars. And they're running past us. The ground is shaking because they're really large compared to the pigs that were back in the village. You know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds of, of, of boar flesh here. But they continue without any interference from you. They continue running off past. And you don't really take any notice about anything about them other than they have not run over you. Okay. They keep running. And then uh, their, the sound of their hooves pounding the ground begins to fade and they're out of sight. And then after a minute, you can't really hear them anymore. Can we hear anything else? Like coming after them? No. Okay. <laughs> that was a lingering pause. <laughs> Just a bit. Is that because of the really bad uh, insight rolls? Uh, possibly. Don't think you know what to say. <laughs> possibly it was it was the nature of your insight rolls. Possibly there was just nothing for you to see or hear. Okie doke. It's the mystery oh, of having a <laughs> master. <laughs> well, I suppose it's safe for us to carry on then. Alrighty then. Okay, am I still okay. prone? Am I, am I recovered? You have recovered. You're standing. Let me remove that effect. Alright. You continue moving through the forest. Are you still heading east? Uh, yeah, northeast ish. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Northeast-ish or east-ish? Mm. I mean, do we go the way the balls came from? Mm. Oh, wow, so decisive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, yeah. Uh, do another uh, survival check in the tower this time. As soon as I can find my window, I will do it. Too many windows. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've made them all smaller. Have you found it yet, Yelena? No, I haven't. Where did it go? Um, you can always click on your picture in the upper left. and Yeah, and that's read. what I was doing. And nothing's opening up. And nothing's opening up? Yeah. Hey, wait, wait, wait. There, it, there it is. It was hiding ah, almost off the behind screen. Behind the map? I was almost off the screen, totally. Okay, sorry. So, survival? Uh-huh, in the tower. All right. That should be good. 
Kai, Terrell, you're you're both kind of still a little bit as you move the forest, you still are a little bit distracted by the magnificence of the, all that boar flesh racing past you, the thrill of it, of the moment. Um, so you haven't really picked up many details about the forest as you try to find your way, look for, looking for signs of anything that's potentially of interest to you. Yelena, you notice to the east a specific section of the forest similar to what you saw before where the trees were bent back by something heavy mm -hmm. only this time you can tell that there's definitely uh, indent indentures where it was something uh, maybe pressing over the ground and the leaves and fallen needles and, and mulch and compost that lines the forest floor. Um, you see that it's been somewhat affected by whatever this was. Uh, there's almost like this, not the same kind of erosion that you, or, or decay that happens naturally with plant life over time, but almost like it was accelerated by some exterior force. Definite signs that that whatever it was wore uh, these leaves and needles and and bark that's fallen away aggressively. Does it look like animal or some sort of man-made contraption? You you don't think it's man-made. You're not quite sure what kind of creature it would be, but you don't think it was a man-made cause. Uh, you also note a few footprints that you think could be orc-sized uh -huh. heading to the east along with this trail. And it doesn't seem to be uh, super fresh. You, you think this, these are signs of, of some damage that's happened, and the, but it's happened recently enough that the forest hasn't had, a time, has, hasn't had time to overgrow again right. and, and cover up the signs of it. Well, we're heading towards orcs, at least, and something else, potentially. So, hmm. do you want to follow this we want trail? Because it almost creates a path in the forest that you could follow in the wake. Um, I mean, it's as good as direction as any, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, we'll find but something, you know. Yeah, but can we sort of like, um, you know, follow it so we're not seen? Kind of thing? You're going to start being stealthy? Yeah, so well, yeah, we good. try. Oh, certainly. That ain't going to happen. Get you know. your stealth on. Clink, 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 clink. <laughs> mm. Yeah, how, do, how does each of you go about being stealthy? I am, I am stealthy. I am the knight. So <laughs> Yelena's. I was I born stealthy. <laughs> I'm just stealthy. Uh, do you want us to make a stealth check? or? I will. I'm just getting tickled. <laughs> I'm like, Yelena, I'm like, I am sneaky. Let's be stealthy now. And then she does absolutely nothing different than what she was already <laughs> doing. Just a drag. That is her life. I'm that is so that is still, no mode. one can see me. I just freak out people. I just in, in regular Falling out of like, trees aside, life. her one her one gear is stealth. Yeah. Um I'm curious, does Kai have any secret like stealthy moves? Mm, do you know? Um I don't think so. Like maybe pull like the hood of your robe up over your head or something and hunch more. Oh yeah, but that might just block my vision, really. Um, <laughs> block your perception. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm wearing a robe anyway, so and my boots are leather, yeah, but they're soft leather and they don't squeak that I know of. So you're in general more quiet than Terrell is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Terrell. No. <laughs> Unless I take my armor off, no. You're creaky as fuck. <laughs> yep. 
Okay, well, Honestly, everybody, clink, uh, clink, clink, clink. everybody roll a stealth check. Tower or no? Uh, just out in the open. It's fine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Terrell, clank, 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 clank. <laughs> Everything can hear you coming. I will, yeah. I'm going to look at you later and go, the night, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a noisy night. Tonight. It's a raver. <laughs> Somebody's throwing a house party. <laughs> it's like a night at the inn in Rishvira with all the animals having a raver. Yeah. So oh, you're kind yeah. of like, for all that the that you're following a path where the underbrush has kind of been flattened and there shouldn't be any uh, branches or, or twigs or anything <laughs> to snap that you that because you're brushing by them, you still somehow manage to find every single little stray twig, every single it's crunchy perfect. bit of wood that can get underfoot, and you're like crunching, 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 crunching. Um, and as you go, um, you're, you're persisting through the forest and <laughs> I'm just so tickled. I'm so tickled. <laughs> can, can Bonnie not speak for laughing? Yeah, nope. I can't speak for laughing. <laughs> All at once, uh, an arrow comes out uh, from the brush. Aiming at one of you. Uh, roll everybody. Roll a d4. And the highest gets it. Great. Oh, okay. Oh. So Ow. an arrow comes uh, out. You can't. The you can't shoot the knight. So. Aimed. <laughs> Apparently, you can. Aimed at Yelena. <laughs> oh, oh no! I can't do it. But it misses. Uh -huh. yeah, Wishes. Whoosh. Past her head. And you guys all whirl around. It's coming from the east, coming from a little tree. I get my shield up and jump in front of the other guys. Uh, everybody roll a perception check. It could be out in the open. Uh-oh, this is not a good... Ooh! Good. Ooh! Good. All right. God. <laughs> Terrell and Kai. You see there's an orc in the tree. Oh, no. Crouched up high. He's he's picked up on your noisy stomping through the woods, and he's trailing you, tracking you with his bow and arrow. I'm gonna change color again. We gonna tell and you later. He sees he sees that you two have clocked him, and he jumps down from the tree. I'm just gonna shout, coward! Don't and you see, like he, it seems like he's getting ready to to run off to the east. And he's gonna shoot out. He's gonna shout out a warning to other people if he makes it. Maybe we should shoot him before he gets away. Yeah, <laughs> roll initiative. Lena. I'm gonna assume a javelin would not. There Ooh. we go. There we Ooh. go. So Yelena, you you shoot. Oh no, wait. You have initiative of like freaking super high. Yeah, right. How did you guys other everybody else land? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't thrown initiative yet. Oh, well, How do you Kai do and that? Terrell, initiative yourselves. It's been a minute. Woo! Some high initiatives, considering. Um, so all of you get to take a shot of what, shoot your shot at this orc scout as it goes running away. Uh, with Yelena getting to go first. What do you do, Yelena? Um, I will shoot with my longbow. Does that hit? I don't think it does. No, it does. It misses. Oh, I'm sorry. He's over there. He was out of my view. I didn't see there was something to roll him on. Uh, so 11 does miss. So you let Alrighty. loose of an arrow, and it's a little bit wide. It shoots past him, and you see him start, and he starts trying to run even faster. Are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can, uh, I can hear you. Okay. Um, next, Terrell. 
All right, well, it's oh, I forgot. To be a javelin. Is, is being active. Okay, Terrell, what do you do? I'm going to chuck a javelin at him. All right, Chuck. Uh, hang on. Uh, ranged is that one? Oh, I need to swap the windows out. Ah, no. Oh, stuff. <laughs> Natural one. Oh, oh Kim's God. disconnected. Oh, Kim disconnected. Oh. Yeah, she's disconnected. Has she disconnected from Discord? She might have disconnected from Discord as well. Oh, best wait. Does that mean I get to throw again? No, it does not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a try. It means your javelin is stuck up in a tree now. And because <laughs> you rolled that that one. And we're going to let uh, have uh, Kai uh, launch an attack while we wait for Kim to reconnect. Okay. D um, so, I'm, well, I'm going to do Firebolt, right? Um, Sorry. I can't remember how to do it. Yeah, do I click cast? Um, let me look at your page and make sure I'm telling you things that are, like, right and good. And that ain't it, Chief. You know where it says attack and ranged? It should t when, you, when you hover your mouse over the range plus seven part, it should allow you to drag it to the, to the orc. And that will roll an attack against him because it's a right. ranged spell attack. Did that work? And it misses because you got an 11. Oh, for God's sake. So everybody misses their shot. <laughs> we're gonna, we're about to have fun, aren't we? Are you back? Are you back in game? I'm back, yeah. It, uh, my internet went Had a blip. on me. Your internet rolled a one. It did. So everybody missed their attack on this fleeing orc. <sighs> what and... a waste. <laughs> And it now, it, you see him run, run, run to the east, and he's kind of out of sight um, behind the cover of trees. But you saw him, he's heading out to the east. All right, do we want to hide? Or do we want to face whatever's going to come back? Um, well, I'm not sure I can climb a tree in this armor. So you guys <laughs> can Normally climb, I climb a tree. tree. <laughs> I'm not wearing... Not wearing anything under my robe, so I don't really want to go up high. No, I do not want to be stood underneath you then. We, I mean, we could find, make cover under the brush and just be off the trail. True. We could at least move away from where we are now. Right. Hide mm. low. Yeah. Okay, so you make, you make note of what direction the orc fled in to the east. Following the path of the of, of uh, the pressed uh, plant life in the woods, and you hunker down, waiting mm. for orcs to come, and you wait. What are you doing? And you wait. And after about a half hour. You begin to think either they aren't coming or they're watching you. Well, I thought we said Kai out was bit. Uh, hang on a minute. <laughs> Quick question How do I get the maps back? I can never remember uh, this. If you, if you have your character sheet open mm -hmm. and you click on your icon to the right it should open up whatever map your icon is on thank you i clicked on i was clicking on the wrong icon what do you reckon keep sort of going east if we go a few few hundred yards and then stop yeah i like it proceed with caution all right okay roll additional stealth checks eh. Some bright purple robes. Oh. Yeah, purple is not a, a natural woodsy color. No, it's true. Should have worn green. It's giving me problems. It's not letting me move the window or. Is it frozen? Yeah, it looks like. Oh no. Erg. Do I need to, just need to log out and come back in? Maybe so. 
Okay. But like if, if, if Fantasy Grounds is definitely frozen, then it might not let you log out and you might have to like force close it. Because I'm not getting a message that you've disconnected yet. Right. Um, let me let me try opening it again. Yeah, it's weird. It's like it's just locked in one place. Let me um kick you out. Just in case it won't let you reconnect. That works. Is it blocking you from reconnecting? Okay, I Not see. Yet. Acquiring file list. Loading, 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 loading. Hmm. So, <sighs> Terrell, what does not being stealthy look like for you? Or it sounds like? Is it just creaky sounds? Well, it's, there's definitely going to be a metallic clank because even if, well, even if I've got like a, an undercoat underneath the chainmail, it's still going to be clanking against itself. Like so you should it's, have, it's should mostly have oiled the hinges before you left the village. Yeah, um, and I guess I'm going to be sort of like trudging because if I've got the shield and weapons and the armor, it's going to be quite heavy. It's not like I can just flit around from tree to tree. So I am pretty much just like trudging along. Squeak with every move. Yeah, this yeah. Is, I'm still stuck. It's still not letting me move the window. I can close it. I can click on the tabs, but I can't drag over. Is it larger than your actual um, Fantasy Grounds area? Um, no, I've got the whole Fantasy Grounds up, taking up the entire window. Right. But sometimes the map goes like beyond the top of the Fantasy Grounds. It's no? It's not being able to move. No, hmm. It's like my character sheet. I cannot move it. You can't. Oh, right. Or, it does, or... it does, did it open when you launched Fantasy Grounds again? Yeah, everything opened up, but it opens up in the same place and it won't let me move it. Huh. I can go to the tabs. But you can't, like, drag or... Yeah, I can't drag. Uh, can you go to the tab and just click on... Can you go to your skills tab? Yeah, I'm on that. Can you double click on the plus five for by stealth? That'll work, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and it will still roll crap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this thing doesn't like me today, I'm afraid. It's it's been really the dice have been pretty harsh for the most part. Yeah. Other other than like um a couple survival checks. It the dice have been haters. God. Okay, we'll see if we can work around this. Um, and it might help if uh, we change a map shortly. Oh, weird. If you guys ever leave this forest glade. <laughs> We're just going to stay here. Just, we live here now. This is maybe, why, this is why he was out this whole lack of being able to move is just, you know. <laughs> this, is why of, Terry, this is why Terry took a month. <laughs> your, your existential game experience. So, so Terrell's just noisy because of all the armor. But and Kai like mentioned, uh, purple is just not a natural woods color. Mm. But you, your your boots get stuck in like the muddy bits of of the ground that um, little little pockets where uh, water has had a pla a chance to collect. And there's just a sucking mud sound as you walk uh, that draws attention to your movement. Nice. But you don't see anybody else pop up as you move east so say you're Oop. headed this way a little um and after a couple hundred uh meters or so there's signs of more of a clearing i'm gonna move you guys to another map and maybe it will help the situation i hope We'll see. Unless maybe something, uh, some permissions got knocked away when I dropped out the first time. I think uh, you wouldn't have been able to open the character again. Yeah. The kicking should have freed it up, and it wouldn't have appeared on your character list, I think, if you didn't have ability to open it. I'm not sure what's going on, though, so I'm, I'm like, huh. I'm going to move you to another map to the fringes. Okay, I'm sharing. New map, who dis? 
Now, does this help at all? Like, uh, can you possibly move your um, yeah your Yelena avatar on this map? Let me um, do a practice roll. Yep, that must have been the problem. Something with something when you got disconnected, it uh, ruined the forest thing. So there might be some way to clear your cache of your fantasy ground um, files because it looks like the one for that particular forest map got kerfluffled. So you see a clearing kind of open up. And to uh, further east, you see signs of several tents. There is a campfire smoking low. It's not a full blaze. It seems to be like the embers of coals keeping just hot enough that it doesn't go out. And you see like a rack of bones uh, looks to be uh, drying some hides. Um, otherwise, roll perception checks. I'm not doing much better. Yelena sees stuff. <laughs> well, it's a good job someone does. Yes, thank God. You guys are like, whoa, ten. Um, but Yelena, she picks out more details. She spots uh, that your, uh, an orc is hiding in this tree in front of you, just, just to the east of you. She thinks it might be your friend from earlier. She sees there's another orc by the fire. She also notices that there is a pit close to you. It's about 15 by 15 feet. It's covered in a tarp. And she thinks the tarp looks like it's kind of oily or greasy or like it's been treated somehow. And then she notices another orc step out of a tent and he seems to be grinding up some substance in a, with a mortar and pestle. Mm. There's your money. <laughs> yeah. Roll initiative again. Oh, I've run out of good rolls now. Strangely, uh, for all that he doesn't notice anything that's going on here, Kai has a chance to do something. <laughs> yeah, but because I haven't seen anything, can yeah. I do anything? You can, Should I just set a tree on fire or you something can move, see what happens? Yeah, you can move. You can interact with something. You know, I'll um, do that. You haven't really noticed anything that you could target yet, though. Can I? Can I? Do I have time to point out the... Yeah, let's say you lady, you can point out the guy in the tree. The tree, yeah. Like, we'll head not to the guy in the tree. Up there. Up there. Mm. Guy in the tree. Practically in front of you. Look oh, up. Yeah. Look up, dude. Yeah, that dude up there. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, um, what I'll do is I'll see if a firebolt will work this time. Yay. And it does. Shoot. Flames come out, a little arrow of flame comes boop out of your hand, shoots straight in the tree, and is right on target. You see a poof of fire on the orc, but you're so precise in your targeting that it doesn't affect the tree at all. Not a single leaf was singed. Oh, thank goodness. And you hear a grunt come out of the tree, um, and that orc, uh, uh, he slips from the pain of the fire out of the tree and he's now prone on the ground. Excellent. But he's let out mean, a yelp. And does that mean I can see him now as well? Yeah, you can all see him now and uh, uh, Yelena, you can see that the orc hunter and the one who was working with the mortal and pestle have heard the sound as well and they turn your direction. And, and know that you're there. Alrighty. Is it my action yet, or is somebody else, or is one of the orcs taking action? Uh, the, the orc by the fire, um, he gets to react, mm -hmm. and he shoots at Kai, um, who's uh, shooting fire. But he, oh, he hits. 11 hits. What a crazy Ooh. world. 
Then purple dressing gown. Yeah. Jeez. Super I need to go to the, um, to the robe store when we get back to town. It's a village. Don't think it's a robe store. <laughs> there might be. It's made out of honey. <laughs> And he does 11 damage to Kai. Swung. Arrow. Right in your chest. Ow. Mm-hmm. It's, an, it's an owl. It's an owl from Kai. Um, and then the orc that fell out of the tree, he stands up. So he's no longer prone. And he tries to shoot at Kai as well. Can I see him? Yeah. Or, or am I still everybody, right? Everybody, everybody can see this guy who fell out of the tree. Orc Hunter Three. Just trying to find it. Um... He rolls a natty one, so he's still uh, knocked. Uh, he's still like disjointed by the part where he got hit by pure fl flame, singed. And he fell out of a tree. The air is knocked out of him. He tries to target Kai with bow and arrow, but he flies completely wide. Yeah. He... Which is a good thing, because Kai is standing there looking at the arrow sticking out of his chest. Now, Yelena, it's your time. You get to act. Okay. Um, do I have a clear line on sight at number two, or is the tree in the way? I say you have a clear line of sight because the tree parts that you can see are mainly the high up canopy yeah, of the tree. And it's a fairly, you know, at least for your full height, um, except for a couple little branches that are worthy of climbing up, uh, it's the trunk of the tree. Let's give him a little surprise. Hit. And you hit with a 14. <laughs> Woo! Doing six damage, but the arrow, you know, swap goes straight to his shoulder. He's clutching at it, and you hear a, a cry from him. He's a bit startled. That's all I've got, right? I think so. Unless you yeah. have any bonus actions, which I'm not sure you do. Oh, I, I just remembered do. something. Uh, you have a feature because of your your background. And not only do you do that piercing damage from your arrow, but you see the orc um, in the, as an after effect. He clutches his skull like he suddenly has a splitting headache. You roll 1d4 uh, psychic damage on him, I think. Uh, it should be where it says um, something like... Uh, d dreadful strikes. Dreadful strikes, yeah. And you drop him. Ah, uh -huh, nice. It's like, it's like the pain of the arrow landing in his shoulder gives him a stroke, and he collapses. So off the map he goes. Yay. And that dreadful strikes, that's good uh, on uh, one hit per round. It's not, I don't think it's really apparent. It, 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 that doesn't matter really at this point unless you're doing um, two-handed, I mean two-weapon attacks at this point. Uh -huh. Which is why I set it up as a separate do hickey on your sheet cool so that's you taking out that that orc now the um the fellow who stepped out of the tent um he's wearing different dress and garb than the others um, um he has more like ceremonial uh hides and and furs hanging um, from his shoulders and you see him drop the mortal and pestle to the side. And there's some kind of yellow substance uh, um, splashes out of it. And uh, he makes signs with his hands. And he, he lifts this um, symbol, which seems to be like a bear claw in his hand. And suddenly a spectral image of that same bear claw appears and it should have the same a location in the order as he does and but I, he can't summon it right by you i think he can only do it up to 60 feet away
So it's not quite within range of you guys, but you see a bear claw spectral up here about 20 feet away from you. Its claws are sharp and it seems to have spectral blood dripping off of them. And then you notice another, another orc steps out of one of the tents to the south. And he's aware of your presence now, um, but he doesn't have an opportunity to attack. Terrell, your turn. Why does... All right, my map keeps moving. It's very annoying. Um, oh, I, thought, I thought I turned I'm... that off. It might be set to uh, auto center for turns, which I thought oh. I turned off. Okay. Um, I'm going to move up to this guy because I've got a 30-foot spot speed, rather. And I'm going to attack him. Okay. Can you move now? Oh, I have to unlock yes. tokens every time. Great. Okay. I'm learning so much about Unity. Ooh, you hit with that. a 17. Do 13 damage, and you knock him unconscious. That's just enough. He is a bleeding out, but he's not completely dead. Okay. That's, well, I could do a bonus action and finish, it, finish him off. Your choice. You can, do your, you can do your finishing move if you want to. <laughs> Finish him! Finish him! So, thund yeah, Thunderous Strike um, says the first time you hit with a melee weapon attack, this spells duration. This weapon rings with thunder that is audible within 300 feet, and the attack deals an extra 2d6 thunder damage to the target. Um, I mean, that would, that would wake up all the orcs. That sounds a little so. bit like overkill. I have auto center map all turned off, so I don't know what's going on with the map moving for you. Yeah, well, let me just leave it. I'll just I'll just kick him next time. Okay. Um, that is all I can do for now. All right, Kai, you're up. Yes. Um. Okay. Magic missile. Right. Mm hmm. It's a thing, get, yes. Yeah, it is a thing. I get three. What's the range? Um, One moment. 120 feet. I think everyone might be out of range except for the unconscious guy. Okay. Um. Well, the shaman is, a, is 50 feet from me, so... If you do the target thing. Oh, he is in range. I'm sorry. I was thinking about the spiritual weapon, which was 60 feet something. So 120 is fine. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so yeah, well, you, could, you could totally zarp the shaman. Right. Well, my question was, can I, you know, do the uh, hawk on number three and then do my other two on the orc shaman? Yes. Sorry, I got it. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. You can pick and choose who gets your little missiles. Did that work? Fantasy Grounds might not uh, show uh, anything except oh. for that damage. Oh, is that lag? Just lag. Lag. All yeah. right. So you've, mortifi you've mortified him. You've like, you yoink the finishing move away from Terrell. <laughs> it's <laughs> fine. Little, this little, little blast, this little pink light, or it, does does your magic missile have a specific color or appearance? Um, I think it's purple. Same color as my robe. So it's purple to match your robe? Yeah. yeah. It, and it zip zabs, and you see it kind of do this like curly circle around Terrell, and then it goes splat into the unconscious orc, <laughs> and then there's one spasm of his body, and, and and like smoke rises, and a little thumpy, fleshy um, impact sound, and he's dead. Excellent. Right. I'll, and um... Terrell's just there, hanging, standing over him with like this with this great sword, and like what? <laughs> He's like Terrell was ready, but like it's been yoinked. Yeah, no worries, mate. Got it sorted. Um, right. So I'll do and the, the next two. two to the, the shaman. Yeah. Or the other. No, dude. to the shaman. Yeah, yeah. Because if we kill, if we kill the shaman, the bear claw disappears. Is that right? Uh yeah. From your understanding of how magic works, yeah. Yeah. 
unless it's like a really good spell, they usually don't stick around after you go unconscious. So you do four damage with the first mm -hmm. missile or the, the second missile. And, and then another four. four. So good, good, good damage. Mm. So he takes two little purple mini explosions and you, you see him kind of flinch as each one hits, but he's still standing. Yeah. Okay. And he's, well, he's got his eye on you now, Kai. Oh, well, do you know what? I'm just going to, um, <laughs> I'm just going to move closer to Yelena. <laughs> Just in case, you know. <laughs> um, and that's me done. Alrighty. Yelena. Kai is is huddling next to you now. Crowd, <laughs> Cow crowding cowering, your space. Cowering next cowering. to you. <laughs> Yelena runs away. <laughs> <laughs> What's hilarious is like I am not the one with the shield, but okay. <laughs> um so a spectral what I see the bear claw. Yeah, you see the spectral bear claw. Now, is, can I actually shoot that? Do I know if I can shoot uh, that? You know that it is uh, not solid. All right, so it's no like point ethereal. Shooting it. All right, let me think. Um, but you have a, a bow of far distance. Right. I'm, I feel you like can I shoot probably anything you can see. All right, I, I'm gonna hit. The, I'm gonna go for the shaman and see if we can distract him. Nice. Oh wow! Oh nice. So you hit damage. him with a twenty-two. So Not you bad. Do, do 13 damage, and it's a new round, so you do three additional psychic damage. You see his eyes squint shut because your 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 sight, since you can shoot so far, is obviously impeccable. No glasses for you, Yelena. Uh, and you see him kind of like shake off. Something's obviously hit him, and you know he's feeling like a headache from the psychic damage you did, but he shakes it off. Good. He's still standing, but he looks a little bit bloodied. <laughs> now his turn. Yay. His turn. Yeah. Might not be looking at Kai anymore. Let me double check what spells. I didn't check. I didn't change anything. Okay. What he does is he steps behind the tent um for cover but he also uh for, as his bonus action moves the spiritual weapon closer to you within attack range and he claws at you Yelena since you're the last person to hit him nice and i have several separate attacks set up for this And it hits with a 22. And the spectral claw swipes across you, and you feel the force of its impact. It does seven damage. Yow! The hunter who is farther south, he sees, like, which way, like, things are going, and he wants to be strategic about things. He moves uh, behind the tent. And it seems like he's uh, withdrawing to the east, away from you. Terrell. Um, What's life like? Do, well, I'm just wondering, does radiant damage do anything to ghostly apparition type bear claws? No. It's, it's, uh, it's not a ghost like uh, you would use um, a spectral attack it's something it's it's basically not exactly of this plane it's it's like a something that's been summoned by the magic so it'd be like okay. trying to attack a magic spell then i which, will just chuck the javelin a oh spell this is it, this is basically a projectile of the shaman the shaman's behind the tent into you said yeah he's 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 behind full cover right now okay One, the um two, there's three, still that four, pit five. 
and it's covered with a tarp to the south of you. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to. I want to go to the pit. You have. <laughs> you can see from where you are. You can actually see the orc hunter from where you are. Number one to the south. Yeah, well, He's that tree getting in the way. He's kind of hidden from Yelena and Kai at this point. Then I will chuck a javelin at him. What's the range on your javelin? Uh, between 30 and 120. And so he's 85. He's more than 30, so you'll have disadvantage. Okay, but you can disadvantage. It. If I mark it as disadvantage and then throw, yeah? Yes. Yeah, hit the disadvantage button on the bottom left and then throw. You hit with a 14 still. So it's like almost an impossible throw, but you have so much force and skill and precision behind it that the javelin flies through the air and thwack. It hits him in the side, doing eight points of damage. And you see him kind of like knocked a little bit off his feet against the side of the tent. He doesn't become prone, but you threw it with a great deal of force. You can see the hit affected him. Okay, and then I'm going to move back here. And now he you can't see him very clearly anymore. That's fine. At the top of the round, you suddenly hear uh, shouting. And these shouts are coming. The shouts are coming from the east, further east. Another orc appears from the east. He's running. Full on dash. Um, he has, his arms are laden with large yellow flowers. And he's looking behind his shoulder. And he shouts out, you know, take guard, they're co it's coming, they're coming. Take cover. He runs straight for the pit. And all he has time to do is to rip off the tarp that is covering it. And make a perception roll. Ba, ba, ba. What's in the pit? Oh! <gasps> I rolled a 20. Kai and Yelena can't quite make it out. But you squint just right, Terrell. And you pick out that deep within this pit is a gelatinous cube. You can see... Not, not bees. Yeah, you see like little pseudopodia kind of rise up because you can't see fully from the position you're in. You can't see into the pit, but you see like a transparent pseudopodia seem to try to lift up um, beyond the containment of the pit now that the tarp is out of place. But it can't fully reach to move out, and so it subsides again. And within that pseudopodia, you see the glint of a couple coins, and it seems to be another one of those yellow flowers that the orc is holding. And as the orc gets uh, to the side of, of this, and he's, he's pulled the, um, the tarp out of the way, he casts down the flowers he had in his arms on top of the gelatinous cube. Close on his heels, out of the forest, there comes a huge swarm of bees. Found the bees. Job's done. Let's go. And the bees are determined on his trail. They're flying directly after that orc who had the flowers. And they basically overrun him. And you hear him scream as, a, you know, these thousands and thousands of bees in this huge swarm, larger than any swarm of bees you have ever seen in your life, sting him to death. And then the swarm makes a beeline for the gelatinous cube. And it dives into the pit. You 
see the pseudopodia of the gelatinous cube shift and kind of jiggle at the buzzing proximity as the swarm approached. And then all at once, as the swarm dives, where normally this oozing monstrosity it would engulf a creature and begin to consume it slowly, the sheer mass of the swarm and its amorphous nature disrupts the gelatinous cube's mass because it's actually smaller. Maybe it's uh, the chitinous nature of the insect bodies, but the bees seem unaffected by a caustic nature of an ooze. And you watch as the two creatures seem to boil and bubble in the pit for a few moments, and then they conjoin, and then slowly a monstrous oozing, dripping swarm of beings begins to rise out of the pit. And it's no longer a gelatinous cube, and it's no longer a huge swarm of bees, but it's like this swarm monstrosity. And you see that it's also kind of covered with like there's signs of some pollen that came off of these yellow flowers. Let me replace these creatures. No, please don't. So it's like this just this thriving swarm and it's like goopy. It's it's like it's still huge and it's just making these little blurp blurp sounds as it flies. And after it kind of like seems to uh feed off of the flowers for a couple of seconds, it rises up out of the pit and it continues flying. Uh, moving off. It seems to pause briefly like it's considering Yelena's smell. <laughs> uh -oh. But it keeps moving. To the west, to the west, to the west, and out of sight. <laughs> now, to resume the, um, the battle order. Well, at least the gelatinous cube is gone. <laughs> Yay. <I> yes. <laughs> and that, that orc is dead by the pit. Dead by B. So you're still in the same position you were uh, like 12 seconds ago. <laughs> just just scarred scared. forever. <laughs> you're just, yeah, just <laughs> scarred forever. A lot has changed, but yet it's still the same. <laughs> it was the bear claw in shock too. <laughs> the bear claw is still there with you. Is it, did it, did it, did it, was it traumatized by what just no, happened? It's, oh, it's okay. just floaty. It's just floaty. <laughs> just floating. Thankfully, it is not also part gelatinous cube right now. It is the same spiritual weapon that it was 12 seconds ago. Small mercies. And Kai. Um, right. Okay. Right. Um, okay. Right. So, um, the orc number one is in my line of sight, yes? Uh, he's a little bit covered. By... I would say between... He's kind of hiding behind the... the between the dead tree and the tent. He's okay. like half covered. So it'd be like a minus five to hit with a ranged attack. Uh, but your magic missiles, of course, would not be affected. What about now? Did you move to the left any? I, I mean the right. To move the like right. One, bit, one square yeah. to the right and you can see better. Just don't step in the pit. Let's say like you have I'm gonna do very partial what? cover if you want to do an actual ranged attack and it would be like a minus two. But your magic missile <sighs> is, of course, unaffected. Okay, I'll do magic missile on this guy. Um, <laughs> you drop him. <laughs> Excellent. That's all it took. That's why he was getting ready to run away. And then I'll do the other two on Shaman, if I can see him, yeah? Is it ours behind you the tent? You can definitely not see him. He is full mm. covered behind the tent. 
not got anything that I can get in with. Hmm. Uh, done. So I'm assuming the bear claw gets an attack of opportunity if I move away. Uh, it does not. I don't think they do get um, reactions because of it being a spell rather than being an actual creature. So you could move away from the bear claw without penalty. Okay, excellent. Um, I'm going to go looking for our shaman buddy. Okay. Now, you are behind some cover. Yeah. But you don't get a clearer view right. of I've, the shaman. Can I do, I actually I can do two, two of those, right? So you can dash um, as your action, or you can yeah. do your normal movement and, like, hold uh, attacking if he comes into sight. I'm going to keep moving around. Okay. I'm going to see if I can surprise him and come around the back. I think that's about right. Okay. Done. It is now the shaman's turn. And Coward. he is retreating because he's seen everyone else get dropped. He's not going to fight to the death. Uh, he's going to uh, try to strategically uh, get out of here. Kai, you have a uh, partial, you still have partial view of him. But the tent is between Yelena and the shaman still. And uh, Tyrell as well. Um, but the uh, spiritual weapon uh, still uh, attacks Tyrell. It hits with an 18. Come on. does four damage and then it moves along uh, closer to him um, becoming adjacent to Kai again like right there uh, Terrell you so what do you do I'm going to move over to Kai, and I'm going to cast Cure Wounds. Okay. Um, so Kai is healed for six hit points. You should only have five damage now, I think. That looks like it corrected. It did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I still can't see the shit. What? No, I can't uh, see the shaman, can I? So I'm going to step up. You yoink the arrow out of out of Kai's chest. You know, put kind of lay hands on, lay a gauntleted hand on him. There's a glow of of energy, a little neigh like a unicorn, and you're feeling much better now, Kai. Yes, I am very much better. And that's that's you for your turn. Um. How many did I move? I went moved three, didn't I? Yeah, I think you might have one more. Uh, but I can't do an attack if I move again, so I'm going to stay put because then I can protect um, Kai. Yelena's moved away from me, so... Yeah, I don't think... You, you, you cast a spell, so there's really... Unless you have a... Yeah, there's not else I can do. do. I've got a reaction. I've got a reaction, but it's only if someone attacks someone close to me, so right. that's why I've been trying to stick with the guys, so... Okay. The top of the order, I think we're back to Kai. Mm -hmm. Can I see the shaman? Is he blocked in any way? You can see him. I can see him. Okay. So, um, I'm going to do um, Scorching Ray okay. on the shaman. Mm. Shoot some fire in this forest. Oh, 
which, you know, absolute. 14 does miss because the shaman has a little bit more elaborate armor going on than the hunters that were accompanying him. Right. <laughs> um, that's me done then. I'm stopping it. Okay, Yelena. All right, going to come around the corner here. You can totally see him. Drop he's, him. He's, like, he's just flat out in the open as far as you're concerned. And nice. hit him with a 22. <laughs> the arrow slams six points of damage. And as a follow-up comes your psychic damage. He's, he's visibly bloodied. He's Good. stumbling. He seems to be on his last legs, but he's still standing. Ah, uh, so close. That, is that you for your turn? I think so. The shaman continues trying to run, 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 run. <laughs> He's almost out of your sight. And he takes one more swipe, uh, this time at... Uh, well, no, he'll take another swipe at Terrell again, because Kai didn't hit with the with the firebolt with um, the spiritual claw. But ha. I don't know whether it's just because you're so armored or because uh, the shaman is having to command the spiritual weapon and he's so injured that he can't quite focus on the attack, but it swings wide. And does no damage. Uh, Terrell, you're up. Um, 120 is like at my max, so I'd have to do a disadvantage again, wouldn't I? You need to move a little bit, one square to the south, because you're a little bit blocked by the trunk right now of the tree you're by. Well, in that case. But now you can like see him if you want to do a javelin at disadvantage. Okay, might as well. Ah. But the javelin also is wide. Um, and then to kind of conclude this combat, Kai, you get to do one more attack and Yelena gets to do one more attack. And uh, if you kill him, you kill him. Uh, and if you don't, he's going to get away. Um, right, okay, so... So one more he's... fireball, one more arrow. Well, I'm going to do Scorching Ray. Okay, Scorching Ray? Yeah. That's uh, like intense fire. Yeah. Isn't that like a triangle of fire? No, it's, well, it's 120 feet, so you create three rays of fire. And oh, that's, oh, oh okay. I, I confuse it with burning hands. So yeah. three, um, three zarps of fire. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. So I'll just move a wee bit to. Is it like uh, a range closer. of 120 feet or 60? Yeah. 120. 120 okay. Feet. Right. Okay. So try so not to hit a tree. I'll try not to. So it says three rays of fire. Okay. Natural 20. Nice. First ray Do of it. fire. Unerringly, it zaps between branches on that tree. Look at all them dice. <laughs> Fire oh. explodes right in the shaman's face. <laughs> and his his head and all the fur in his headdress just lights on fire. And you hear a yelp and a scream and he like instantly collapses from shock and he's dead. And the spiritual weapon claw poofs out of sight. So you've you've um, cleared out this orc camp, and it's now just left for you to kind of like gather your wits and examine the site for signs of anything interesting. But because it's after four, we will leave that for next week. Alrighty, fantastic! I'm glad the rolls got better there at the end. Oh, oh well, yeah. yeah, that one last that one last roll, yeah, and. Um, the javelin as well. Alrighty. 
so next week uh, there will be, I guess, uh, looting if there's anything to loot, searching if there's anything to search, and then uh, whatever you're going to do about that swarm monstrosity that went flying off in the woods. Well, I feel mm. we should just leave it to do whatever the fuck it wants. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all need to get some beekeeping outfits. <laughs> That's right. Mm. Yeah. Industrial strength. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That was fun. Thanks, Bonnie. Yeah, thank thank you. you, guys. Uh, yeah, next, that was great. Next and, week, is it? And yeah? thank you, anybody who's watching. We'll be back next Saturday, 1 o'clock uh, Eastern in the afternoon. 6 p.m. GMT. For uh, more bees and gelatinous booze. <laughs> do not listen booze or uh, that's do not what listen booze. does that mean we have to make jello shots <laughs> yeah that might be it like uh green jello shots that's right green jello yeah for cool yeah okie doke <laughs> and i haven't quite i forgot i can't remember if this is actually a holiday on anybody's calendar for kai oh i'm um, supposed to be into holidays no but sorry it might be national know. uh go to a forest day could be yeah or national um eat raw porridge oats for breakfast day um, <laughs> nom 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 mm, yeah. or national avoid a bar day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah avoid a bar day many mm -hmm. many options yeah so many options for a holiday yeah yep. and kai will celebrate every single one <laughs> maybe we'll get it next time about exactly what form of, of celebration yeah when do, kai yeah when Kai celebrates a holiday, what is it? What is what does he do? I'll um I'll brainstorm it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All righty, y'all. Thanks, Bye guys. All right, thanks for that. Later. I shall end the stream. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye, all.